Since the beginning, we have been faced with the question of what it is to be human. We struggled for centuries to find our place, our identity. After the fall, things became a lot more complicated. Not only did we have different races, it was clear that we had been split into more than one species. Many believe that the Pures are all that remains of the human species. The mutants are another, and the goblins and trolls a third. It might even be more diverse and nuanced than that. In the new world, what is human might not even be the right question. We used to use the word human because that was all we knew. Sentience is part of it, but it's really a question about the soul. Not who is human, but who is truly alive. Who can think and feel. Even before the fall, we learned that it wasn't just humans. Apes, crows and ravens are like us in many of the ways that matter. In the new world, add cats and awesomes to the list. What about someone that isn't flesh and blood? Do you need to be organic to have a soul? To be human? It's been four months since we saw the team last. Uh, they have been dealing with a very cold, intensely cold winter, and also uh, the repercussions of their last adventure. Uh, certainly not all of them, uh, but four of them are dealing with having faced uh, Corpus, the, the ghost of an entire area of the state that was destroyed during the bombs. Um, they've been finding various ways to keep themselves distracted, finding ways to hone their skills, and become ready to go back out. Uh, it's finally started to get warm again. Uh, we're going to start with uh, let's let's have uh, D and Navad, please. So uh, so so D, you were taught a lot about movement when you were at the laboratory. Yep. Uh, some of it was combat. I mean, you don't consciously remember a lot of that, but they also taught you ballet. They also taught you gymnastics. Yep. which is why you have things like acrobatics. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago, Navad kind of shyly approached you and explained that he gets beat up a lot. He gets hit and would like to get hit less. Uh, when you watch him move, uh, both Chan and I have described him as being, you know, uh, long-legged and a little awkward. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I keep Wait, pointing back to like Bob Cratchit. No, not Bob Cratchit. Uh, he's, Headless he's Horseman. He's like a he's like a he's like a, a he's like a young deer, but yes. with skull with he's skull like pupils. He's, a, he's, he's like a like young deer as an edge lord. You yeah. know, I mean yeah. that's his deal. Yeah. So coordinated and agile would not be his thing, right? No. So the two of you are D is trying to teach Navad how to move with more grace. Uh, I would like yeah, like a couple of minutes. I'd like a scene. Uh, where D is going to explain to Navad how to move like he's not a box full of dry sticks. Okay. I have to be really honest. You move like a box of dried sticks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's fair. But it, I mean, it's okay. I, okay. Um, have you ever heard of like visualization before? Uh, yeah. I mean, that's basically how I do magic. Okay. I mean, so you know, you've seen me do cool tricks, right? You've seen me, like, you've seen me do magic. Here's the secret. To do that, all you have to do is think about it hard enough. Hmm. Okay. Well, this should be pretty easy for you then. So okay. what I want you to do is basically imagine yourself to be a river crane right? Like the bird, the one that's got the really long legs, huh? Yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So if you, I need, uh, while you imagine this bird, I need you to commit. I need you to be this bird. I need you to eat worms in your mind. Like you are this bird. And whenever oh, I, I, what if I already eat worms in my mind sometimes? Then you are that much, like it's easier for you. You're doing great. So okay. It, I love to play pretend, so this is what makes it easier for me uh, whenever I'm not, like, 
really concentrated it in my whole like you know you, m battle mode right so uh it's it's like right okay so so you channel the crane and it starts at the beak right okay starts at the beak so we beak and then we pull we pull our power into the into the head of the crane right okay so we're pulling power and then we pull it down into our chest and our chest is out it's out into into the world because we're a confident crane we're a confident crane and do then, i have a willpower check from you navad uh yeah okay 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 so we're so uh yeah i succeed i got three sixes i'm good could i have a uh, evade check from d please what an evade check from d yeah. what am i gonna uh-oh this hey, seems like i have, go weird. Uh, i got a five okay so you tell the mage who tells you that his magic works with bow power to get to to picture this and gather in his energy and then pull out a uh -huh. blast comes up from his chest you roll with it, you take a couple of hits and land on the ground steaming. <laughs> so <Okay. laughs> yeah, I guess I guess that's how I fight. Well I I I I like I I like it. It hurts and that was fine. You shouldn't, um, you shouldn't like to get hurt. Anyway, um, so, uh, um, yeah, that was a great, that was a great first, that was a good one. That was. Elsewhere, uh, can you give me a Dr. Winona and Eric two up, please? So, Eric, you're out back uh, polishing Karen. Which is not it's not a euphemism. You're you're literally polishing Karen. Yeah. And uh why not uh he has come out twice and not said something. So it's pretty obvious she's working up to something. Karen, huh? Yeah. She a Karen? Still Karen. Oh, for anyone who's listening that doesn't know what that is, Karen is his rifle. Um, you you all good? Yeah, I'm great. I'm so glad that we have grown closer over these past handful of months. Mm -hmm. I think you're a great being. <sighs> okay. What is it? All right. Um, I know that we're just now getting close, so I probably can't be asking a lot of favors, but... You know, when we were out in the desolation, you know, a few months back, things got, they got real, okay? And I mean, you should have seen me. You would have been proud. I did like these cool moves with my pistol. Uh-huh. I don't have a name for, so, you know, TBD, maybe we can like brainstorm some names. I was thinking sure. Carol Brady, something like from the past, but we can talk about that later. But I just realized that um, I'm getting more accustomed to our environment and I'm trying to get out of my bubble. Um, I know that this world is very dangerous and I know that the way I cope with it is pretending it's not. I'm a doctor now and a colonel um, and I really want to become more of a leader but you know I'm not the uh, <laughs> I'm not the most intimidating person. Sure. So I didn't know if you had like some you know, tricks or tips for me to be like, Ur. All right, first, <laughs> look at me. How tall do you think I am? Not very. Like but how tall do you think I am? Short. But how tall <laughs> do you think I am? Yeah, I get it. You know what I mean? Yes. yes. You walk tall. You go to places and you do things. You put it all out there. I mean, look at you. You dress like a fox. You got, you know, pink all over the place. You're a colonel. You're a doctor. You're pretty good with a gun. Except every once in a while when you celebrate, it falls out of your hands. I heard the story. I, that was, you know, the wind. And, but go on. 
I will say this, not to be all Zen, because I don't really even know what that means. <laughs> but let me tell you this. The gun is an extension of you. You are not an extension of the gun. Wow. That got me like right here. How tall do I seem now? You're a giant. That's right. Thank you. I'm going to cut to another scene. Um, I guess we can do the whole, let's just do everybody. Um, Alan, you've been traveling on your own for months now. And uh, were you able to do what Instinct said to do, which is plug into a system R2-D2 style, download some shit, get a sense of what's going on? That didn't work at all. So you've been wandering around. Uh, fortunately, feeling if you were, you know, uh, pink and spongy, would have been, if not seriously fucked up, dead by now. But fortunately, you've fallen off precipices, been shot. You know, you, you've got, you know, duct tape bandages probably here and there, and you're generally okay. And the other thing is, uh, if you were someone that had to be careful about what they ate, some of the shit that you've eaten, uh, I, I use the reference Mr. Fusion, like you can put almost anything in your mouth hole and digest that. So you can just pick up a clump of like weeds and grass and earth, <laughs> eat that if you have to. Uh, that makes survival so much easier. Uh, but unfortunately, you've been driven by a need to fix uh, a repeating problem that's getting worse and worse and worse. And during the winter, it was, uh, the winter was actually pretty, pretty good for your circuitry. But as things are warming up, you're a little worried that the condition is going to get worse. So up ahead, you see what used to be a Billy Badger Super Center. So our, um, our version of uh, Bucky's. <laughs> so, uh, you know, that we don't have to pay rights for. And uh, so it's got the big, dumb mascot up front. And uh, it's all chipped up to be all properly post-apocalyptic. But the weird thing about this one is it's... It's like a, uh, a um, uh, medieval times restaurant exploded and got its shit all over the gas station. So there are like pieces of armor and banners and all that kind of stuff. And uh, you walk up and out comes a guy that's wearing the usual kind of waster survival patchwork clothes. But over that, he has kind of a medieval times style, you know, uh, tabard kind of thing belted. Good, good day, sir. Welcome to the Shire. Hello, friend. Um, where exactly is the Shire? Uh, the, the Shire, the Shire is here. You have arrived. Welcome. Mm. Oh, where is here? It uh, just, just behind me. Yes. Well, we were in, we were in, he kind of drops his kind of bad Renaissance fair bit. But we're, we're kind of in Southern Texan or, or what they used to call Texas, but that was a long time ago. Hmm. Good. Texan. It's good to it was, know. It good. was after the corporates uh, bought out most of the states or conglomerates of states. This has became Texan. Hmm. Yes. Yes. Hmm. I'm you looking for some churros. I would normally offer a guest churros, but churros, huh? John, bring bring the man a churro. Uh, who are you looking for? Well, we have knights, lords, and wizards aplenty, and a fox. Have you heard of an of an Ada? Ada? No, no. Hmm. She must not have stopped here. Well, 
I'll have one of your jewel rolls uh, to uh, go. Come on in. And the, oh, oh. it turns you in in the middle of the area that's that's sort of like a cash wrap, and it's got seats because uh, I don't know if you've been in the Buckies, uh, but they they have like in the day they have like rows and rows of junk food, and they have a little place you can sit down and treat it like a mall. So they've got a like dining area, and the other guy runs over. He's got like a Robin Hood cap on. And he's got a churro. And he seems very proud of the fact that they can offer churros. Here you go. Oh, hell, I. And he, again, this guy drops character. Are you wearing armor, sir? Uh, no, this armor isn't my skin. This is. This armor is my skin. Sorry. Everything's been a little fuzzy since I've woken up. Woken? I. This. Get one of the lords. Oh, here, enjoy the complimentary churro. Welcome, to the, welcome to the Shire. Go get, get Eric. Okay, uh, one of them runs off, and uh, you, you're given the churro, and uh, you, you taste things, but it's kind of like, well, this is a terrible analogy. Experiencing something through a condom. In that, yeah. the, the sensation is one step back, right? In that it's safe and clean and good for everybody. <laughs> and appropriate at all times. That's like, exactly wow. right. Um, so you, you read everything about what it is. Mm-hmm. And you, your system tells you that it is tasty, but there's no direct, like that doesn't come, like you don't bite it and go, hmm. Like you're just yeah. aware that it is tasty. Appropriate levels of flavorful. <laughs> uh, <laughs> mm-hmm. oh, we're glad to hear it. Uh, and out from the back comes a goblin. Uh, and the setting has goblins. And the goblins are mutants. Uh, they word on the street. You've been asking. I'm assuming it's also basing on the way you're playing him that when he runs into something, he's like, what is that? <laughs> what the hell is up with that? Please explain this. Uh, somebody has actually explained that they think that the goblins and trolls are mutants that is maybe where the human race is going, largely, and they point to the fact that they are immune to radiation. So they think what has become of most of humanity is they will eventually become greenskins which is the horribly racist way to refer to them. Uh, But this gentleman is a goblin, and he is described as follows. He is about, uh, well, he's short, but not like uncommonly short. You might think he's taller than he actually is when he comes walking up to you, as a matter of fact. Um, He is, in fact, a green skin, a goblin. Um, and he's got uh, he's got a patch over uh, what is his one of his mutations, which is a third eye. being a gunslinger, he has to keep the the patch over his third eye so that things don't go to five dimensions. They stay in three. Um, he's also got exceptionally long arms that uh, betray the fact that he's got a lot of hair, kind of in a in sort of a gorilla ish fashion. Um, because one of his other mutations is that he has taken on a bit of the characteristic of a gorilla. Um, he's also splendidly dressed uh, because. <laughs> Uh, usually when you see him coming, he's carrying a gun and fuck you. So um, when you when you see him, it's he's making no attempt to hide himself at all. Um, he is uh, neither proud nor ashamed of his goblin nor his, uh, his uh, apish um, self. Um, but uh, he's sort of uh, convivial but also a little uh, standoffish, I would say is probably. The Do you carry way. Karen inside the Shire or is Karen like yeah. in your room or behind the counter or something? No, I got Karen always. Okay. You remember the, you remember the, uh, the cross sling that I carried oh. the leg in one side of it and Karen in the other? So very evil dead too? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. And uh, if you, you want to take a shot at describing Adam or do you want me to do it? Oh, yeah. Adam uh, is 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 a kind of a mix of uh, he's 
like he is all metal, but you can tell that the metal is uh, kind of molded and bent in a way to give him what was uh, perceived as human features back before this time. He is, uh, uh, you know, um, I think we've agreed on Act Two Bicentennial Man, which yeah. I think is a great <laughs> metric for Android. <laughs> Uh, because that is a picture that is burned into my head uh, from the moment I saw it. Uh, but yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to imagine he's, he looks, um, you know, he's, he's like an average built Android. He's dressed in, in my head, like a, like he, he has a, a vest kind of like a, um, a bow tie dress shirt, uh, dress pants, uh, almost as if he was a, uh, he, he, he is dressed to impress. And, but uh, all of that now is tattered, dusty. Uh, he definitely needs a new vest. I'd say, uh, the bottom half of the right side of the vest is completely gone. Uh, there's burn marks. Uh, and also he's wearing an apron, uh, <laughs> uh over this. Oh, yeah, yeah. Get up. yeah he's, he's wearing an apron. <laughs> you took that uh, with you? Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, it's, it's still with me. Uh, you you put it on me while I'm asleep. I'm keeping it. Uh, <laughs> it's mine now. Yeah, yeah, it's mine. So, <laughs> so, so, so yeah, he's pretty much, and he has um, uh, he has like a, a burger pal hat on on top. So he has he has the burger pal hat and an apron, uh, but under it, it is a vest, uh, dress shirt, bow tie, and uh, slacks. Little well, point for everybody, uh, uh, first Eric, then all the players. Um, cyborging is not unheard of. Androids are not a thing. So this is not, I mean, there's all kinds of theoretical stuff that might have been cutting edge before the fall, but none of you have even heard of like androids walking around. So this is, you know, maybe a robot, but he's not moving like a robot. He's moving like a person. Like robots would be like the one they had uh, briefly behind it in Avengers Tower. It was just the upper part and was kind of clearly robotic. The ones they have in Japan now, uh, welcoming you to hospitals, that exists, but they're not actual cyborgs, uh, androids. Hello. Uh, Hello. Hello. I am wondering if you have seen another android named Ada. Well, uh, to be honest with you, I've never seen another uh, android. I mean, you're it. Hmm. I would have thought by now I would have been overrun by us. By now? Was there a schedule involved? Uh, well, you know, I, I <laughs> like to imagine that we were well on our way to uh, assisting humans and such to uh, so, so I guess that also went away when everything went away everything went away man I'm going to go ahead and uh, cue if you a little bit the proper name you're looking for is actually B uh, B is the reason you're at this particular B place. okay B B okay yep B yeah it says it now okay looking for B did I say Ada? I'm sorry, what? Because I meant B. <laughs> hey, it's all right. See, the, the, fun, the, the fun thing here is you're malfunctioning, man. <laughs> so it's literally impossible to make a mistake because you've got cross wires. <laughs> so um, Eric instinctively kind of like flexes his hand and kind of doesn't reach necessarily, but like changes his countenance just a little bit. Uh, so, uh, Alan, go ahead and give me an insight check. Okay. I got all of these. Yeah, we'll go ahead and use right. some game mechanics. Yeah. Because <laughs> why not? I have uh, no sixes, two fives. All right. So, with a partial success, you can tell that dropping that name that Eric has an emotional reaction but you're still kind of learning, so you can't really figure out what kind of reaction he has. Hmm. What, uh, what do you want with B, friend? I need them to help me. Help you what? Hmm. 
Hmm. I guess I'm still trying to figure that out, right? Well, listen. Uh, Eric, give me a perception roll. Sure. Where are you, perception? Right side, middle. Yep, I'm looking. Cool. <laughs> Oh yeah, I am perceptible. So I have perceived. He's twitching, <coughs> like in ways that are a little disorienting because they're not ways a, a human would twitch. Okay. Like, you know, uh, muscles will just kind of go strange, strangely. He's got a collection of small ticks, uh, and you're noticing that when he's talking about, you know, not knowing what he's looking for, he kind of leans forward almost like somebody that's got like a heart condition okay hey uh first of all let me tell you this i am not afraid of you and i have no desire to hurt you but if you make me regret that decision i will not hesitate second of all i'm afraid to tell you that the person that you're looking for is no longer here what? She's gone. And I mean, gone. W- w- what happened? She's the only one who can help me. I need her help because I, I don't know what's happening to me, but I don't, I, 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 I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't, okay. I don't, calm, I, calm, I, I, calm I don't. Down, friend. Calm, calm down, friend. Take a deep breath. How do you know to look for B? I don't remember. Also, I can't take a breath. I just thought I'd point that out. I am an android. I do not breathe. I eat. I drink. But it serves me no purpose but energy. Well, but Not the same energy, but you know. Fa- it. Fair enough. I, I didn't mean to insult you. Uh, <laughs> it's, a, it's just a method of trying to center you a little bit. I see. Um, B is no longer with us, but I, I have an idea. She, uh, well, why don't you, why don't you come with me? Does okay. that sound good? Yes. Girl, girl leads in, my lord, is everything all right? Yeah, uh, have you seen D around? She's, uh, in her room again. I think she's going through B's old stuff. That's what you call fortuitous. All right. And so I shall, because you're the Lord. All right. So uh, so I, we I, head to, to D's spot. You know, my Lord, I could, I could put your weapon, you know, in a stand or on hooks. I like to keep Karen with me. Consider oh, it. Uh, all right. All right. She's just my girl. You know what I mean? Like. I I do not, but I accept what you're saying. We Someday, all carry our own truths, my lord. Exactly. Someday you'll find the one for you. You just keep looking. She's out there somewhere. And sometimes she's metal? Yes, if you're lucky. That's going to change my dating profile. Well, and the uh, two of you head back. And uh, Alan... He takes you to the back area where this the store had like the manager's office in the break room. And uh, I think we already established that D's uh, B was on the sub level. Uh, so that's where that's where uh, D is. And uh, go to the room. There's a couple rooms down here. There's a, a like, not a bubble room, but there's a generator down here because there are actually our lights here. So this is actually a pretty good. You've been to a couple of settlements, a couple of hideouts. And uh, this is in pretty good shape. Um, so you uh, knock on the door and uh, D answers. So I'm going to have that be like a triggering, if we had the money to film an animated cutaway, this would be a montage of uh, Alan wandering completely confused, at first not even able to speak. And what he sees over and over again, uh, the Channel 8 transmissions, often in public places, that from time to time are interrupted by news broadcasts by B, um, 
for quarter at, at large, uh, be in Jeepers. And we see as that montage progresses, you know, through the first two, three months of his reawakening of how it was B that effectively taught Alan about the new world and in some sense, even how to speak. Uh, so we would probably even get a little bit of that last transmission where because of the way she talks to Jeepers, he figures out, well, Jeepers looks to be a robot. If anyone looks like they could help me, it would be this, this helpful woman that I keep seeing and so since then, you've been looking for B. And you've been asking around. And finally, they're like, oh, yeah, she lives over, you know, at this. It's a weird place, but uh, they got good churros. And you headed there, and the door opens. And there is a woman that looks like B, but you're not sure is. She's dressed differently. She holds herself differently but she's physically identical. So the weird thing is from his perspective to Alan, this is like looking at one of your cousins. Like you're Alan five, the other Alans are all kind of like you, but a little different. This is like that. This looks like another version of B. Uh, D, uh, yeah. this, this uh, Natalie dressed young, um, gentleman is uh is looking for b and uh i oh i didn't even get your name alan 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 five alan five this is uh this is d oh Hello, if d. your name is alan five that means there's more of you like there's more of me that's so cool wow so you must be a different model than B. Yeah, she's my sister. I'm sure you've heard the news. I'm sorry if that makes you sad. No, that just means that you can help me, right? I can try. What do you need help with exactly? So let me download a little information on uh, D. Uh, you've been ha having people help you to uh, help complete Jeepers. Jeepers is in your new room because you inherited Jeepers. Jeepers was in an, a very much a Heath kit, you know, a bodge together, not fully working yet state when last we saw Jeepers. Just a head and a wig stand. Um, so far, you have Jeepers bust working. So just the, the head, shoulders, no arms, no ambulation. The face animates. It's not quite as janky as it was when last we saw it. It can hear, see, and speak reasonably well. Uh, the eyes don't actually animate. You actually defaulted eventually to readouts. So it does digital animation on the eyes. Okay. So they're a lot more ex expressive. Uh, the AI is still learning. So it can be erratic. Uh, actually makes mistakes a little bit like Alan is. So occasionally we'll skip and stutter. Uh, it's actually reminiscent of that behavior. At this point, Jeepers has to stay tethered to the data cube and power supply on the desk. So it's fairly bulky. Uh, there's no one with the tech skills you need in the Shire. So you've been working with an owl tech named Bertram. You pay him to make upgrades. So when Eric and Alan uh, enter D's room, you see that there is the upper, you know, the, the bust of a robot sitting on her desk. Well, yeah, like I said, I, you know, she's not here, but I, I am, I can, I can see if I can try to help. Oh, okay. Uh, sh sure. Please, please help me. I, I don't know what's, what's happening to me. Okay, well, um, honestly, I've, I've done a little bit of work, but I usually ask Bertram for a lot more help than normal. What exactly are you looking for specific help with? Like, what's, what's the, the main need? I don't feel good. I, I, 
feel myself malfunctioning from time to time and it feels like I'm shutting down. Jeepers powers itself up. You have it set to do that when it feels there's something that it needs to do. So for example, if you were attacked, it would wake up and sound an alarm, that kind of thing. So it, it boots up, which takes, because it's janky tech, it takes a minute or so. There's a lot of whirring from the little data box. We all kind of stand there and look at it appreciatively for way too long a period of time. Yeah, the head moves a little and the eyes digitally open. Huh. Well, hi, Jeepies. What's going on? Hi, hi, Bees, sister. You can call me Dee. I, I keep trying to program you. It's a lot easier to say. Understood, Bees, sister. <laughs> Why, why did you turn on? <laughs> I heard something I didn't realize, something I didn't recognize. It it sounded not human. Oh, yeah. Uh, Jeepers, me, Alan. Alan Five, I guess. Hi, I'm Jeepers. So you've seen Jeepers. Jeepers, normally, we described it as looking like, you know, one of those all-in-one uh, egg big muffin makers that you buy for ten dollars and I'll, I'll run kiss your ass because it's a unit asker. Like picture that hovering with a camera on it. Okay. That's what Jeepers. That's the Jeepers you know, and that's actually was B's cameraman. Okay. Hi, Alan. I'm Jeepers. Hello, Jeepers. I'm Alan Five. Oh, I'm, 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 I'm Jeepers 2. Oh, oh, Jeepers 2. Jeepers 2. Yeah, I used to be small and round and kind of like one of those Egg McMuffin makers that Elton Brown would kick your ass for buying because it's a g g g Hmm. Wow. I don't know how impressed you should be. I don't have a body. Jeepers, do you think maybe you could run a diagnostics on Alan and see if you can um, see? Wow, something? you you think I'm so much more advanced than I am. <laughs> it's absolutely charming, Bee's sister. <laughs> she always personified you as being very capable. Jeepers <laughs> one wasn't even an AI. I was basically a remote controlled truck. He beeped. <laughs> he occasionally beeped. I did, and that usually meant like... battery low. <laughs> He was, he was a smoke detector. <laughs> he sounds yeah. like... On a string. He Hi! Like, he's a smoke detector on a fishing pole. He, he sounds like really his power him. supply. He sounds like his power supply is failing. That's mm -hmm. real bad, okay? Hey, uh, Alan, man, do you know what, what runs you? Hmm. And uh, at that point, Alan proceeds to open up his chest and look down <laughs> to uh, to see what powers uh, <laughs> powers him. Did you see the largely regrettable, except for a couple of scenes, remake of RoboCop? <laughs> like all the insides of RoboCop, those shots were super cool. The movie was shit, but they did like really good shots where he would just Murphy would just open up like that. So he does that, and it's like, oh, yeah, it's a whole tangle of shit in there. But the thing that's you don't need a tech skill to realize is, like, I'm terrible with cars and car engines, but when a car is beat and, like, the engine is failing and it's got, like, burned grease and it's steaming, it's real obvious. So his chest cavity, like, it's sm literally smoking. That does not look good. Yeah, that's really not great. Well, it doesn't feel good. Be nice. He's your new friend. Uh, I think you're sexy. I mean... You gotta work on that. He's got arms and legs. What are you asking for? Don't set your bar too high. How does he turn off exactly, Jeepers? There's a big button that I won't tell you where it is. Pop! I hit the button. <laughs> he turns right off. 
It's an obvious button. It's like a giant red button on his back. It's you couldn't a red button from the uh, the from the Red and Stippy episode. <laughs> no, no, not the shiny red button. Not the candy yeah. color button. No, no, they, uh, there was the, the it's a famous in the maker community because people are hacking. You would push it, and it would. I forget what it said, but it's um, yeah. I dropped a reference. I can't back up. I'll Perfect. Send a link to the ad so people know where it is later. It's one of those though. Cool ref. Sweet. Yeah, it was it was awesome. <laughs> so do you buckle back up? Okay. Yes. He moves his apron. Has back. everyone seen enough? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean I don't know about you, D, but the only other thing I can think of is Winona. Well, I He's know. He's a doctor. She- yeah, but she specializes in organic matter, right? Like, he's a little less organic. Um, I mean, it wouldn't hurt to go ahead and ask her. Navad's got magic, too. Why don't we get the whole gang involved and see if anybody can help him? Sounds good to me. You head out in the hallway, and uh, Navad walks out of the wall. Merlin is with him. They oh. Move- Pass through the wall. So there's uh, a guy that's dressed like a uh, like a stock boy, but he's got a really long wizard beard. And uh, Navad, can you physically describe yourself, please? Uh, yeah. So um, I'm like a 17 year old kid, um, like uh, all leg, like probably like about six foot five. One of the models is like how freakishly. Um, weirdly shaped baron trump is like his his waist is like too high and he's all legs um like a like a croatian basketball player or something and um so um he's about 17 years old um wears wizard robes with a denim jacket over it um has a little uh kind of a shaved sides little emo flip over haircut um, probably the, the, the most striking thing it takes a little while to pick up on is, uh, his pupils, um, have taken on the shape of, uh, skulls. They're like literally, uh, skull shaped pupils. Uh, he's wearing little, uh, little, little kind of, uh, edgy, um, uh, skull earrings and, uh, yeah, that's kind of his vibe. Do you see these two figures literally walk through a wall? Almost like it was a graphics error. Oh, well, I, I thought the, I leans into the about, sorry, I thought the hall was empty. Wait, who leaned in? What? Uh, uh, that was Merlin to Nevada. Mm. Oh, Merlin, oh, I'm sorry, I missed that. What did Merlin say to Nevada? Sorry, I thought the hall was empty. Oh, um, no, it's, it's okay. Well, thank you for your help. I'm less tired. Yeah, same. I'm going to go uh, restock the churro machine. He pats you on the back and heads upstairs. Okay. And there you see um, D and Eric in the company of someone you don't recognize who doesn't seem to be flesh and blood. Uh, um, hi, Navad. Um, hi, D. Hey, Eric. Who is who is this? Uh, he's, he's another series friend, like a like like me and Jeepers. Uh, this is Alan Five. Oh, okay. Hello. Um, f- number like five is in the number. Is that your last name? Number five is in the number in the model of Android. I was. Oh. Oh, right? you were in it. Whoa. Super. <laughs> do, the, do the thing, Alan. Open the thing. <laughs> and then so Alan opens his chest back up. So he pulls everything aside and he goes, whoosh, and it's all like some of the circuitry is too red because it's overheating and there's like steam coming off it. Uh, look at his innards, Navad. Look. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> hey, check this out. And I, um, I, I make my. <laughs> As he as he exposes his robot innards, I I I let my head burst into my flaming skull. Oh, 
Uh, As all of this happens, I look at Eric and I go, oh, I forgot to tell you, uh, Navad shot me with stuff in the chest earlier. It was great. Uh, Yeah, she was she was teaching me to be a crane and and then i like a heart a heart blasted her is he having this conversation with me while his head is on fire uh-huh. yeah yeah <laughs> um that's cool kid um h- how was that for you um it was it was pretty good i mean i didn't know i didn't know that i could do a crane move like that and uh, Eric just kind of slaps him on the on the shoulder and goes, "This has been quite a year for you." <laughs> I've, I've I've learned so much. Um, you guys, guys are my faves. I, I'm glad you guys are showing off or whatever, but I don't know how your hothead is gonna help his wires, really. Oh no, I was just we were just comparing cool stuff. He's cool. I can't open my chest. I blasted you with my chest. Bird Alan, Alan doesn't seem to have reacted to your head being on fire. No, I'm sure he's even just particularly like, what, what is that? Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this, this is a, a thing that he does. Um, and it always turns out exactly like this. <laughs> is he overheating? <laughs> I, I'm going to, I take it off. I, I take it back off. Uh, no, it's just like a thing I do. I guess that's not that cool if you can open your chest up. No, no. it is very cool. It's super cool, Navad. It's super cool. Thanks. Navad, insight check. Let's see I'm how insight. let's see see how unperceptive because you're 17. Uh, uh, you okay, are. okay, sounds good. Hold on, I gotta swap my light here. My light is being weird. One second. Ooh, no, it's like an okay, 80s cool. disco, man. It's cool. All right, in an insight check. Yes, please. All right. Okay. I only get four dice. This, this is a reading signs. I got a, I got, I, I, I got a, I got two fours, a three, and a five. So I got a partial success. Here's here. what you get: D is acting weird around you. D is acting weird around me. Yeah, just weird. You, with even, partial, you don't get more than weird. Okay, but weirder than normal. Yes. <laughs> I mean, reacting differently to you than others. Yes. Well, that's but that's been the case for a while. So is yeah, it, yeah, no success. I mean, you want to blow your good karma and get a no, 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 no. Oh, no come fine. on. So I just no, 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 no. I'm good. I'm good. Get bad karma. No, no, I'm good. Um, just I, it's weird. But we've been like hanging out for four months. So is is it today different than, or no, have I not I'll, noticed for four today months? Today is the day I give you a chance to figure it out. Was that's always different about today? Okay, uh, I finally pick up on it. Weird. <laughs> Can no, I like, blow our good karma to be able to tell him what's going on? <laughs> you, you absolutely, man. Okay. Kid, come here. What's up? <laughs> she likes you. Oh. Yeah, and it's been that way pretty much ever since the second that you met. That would it definitely is, be a flash montage of like scenes from like two seasons of Navad's show of like encounters that suddenly come into alignment from like click, 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 you know, her like picking up your, your drop groceries and giving you kind of a sideways <laughs> look, like just dozens of examples that you just missed. Oh, um, okay. Wait, wait. The last time you got intimately involved with somebody, it did not work out. What do you mean it didn't work out? It didn't work out for us. Uh, Y'all, that, that isn't because I got intimately involved. No, but you me were and, all pain no, in the ass no, afterwards. Were... Like you were sweaty and weird. And yeah. I don't I don't want you to be sweaty and weird, man. I, it's kind I, of I want thing. you to, I know. I Just look, it's not, it's not worth it. She's she's B's sister. I know. That's no. That's not good. No, I know. That's what I'm saying. Maybe that's why I didn't even pick up on it cuz it's like it's like the sister of my dead friend. That's really But weird, she man. is like a 100 times smarter and stronger than you are. Oh, okay. So if she puts it all together and you don't like her, there's going to be bad blood. Why not? Everyone else was missing, so you came downstairs, <laughs> and 
D is standing there with someone who's clearly some kind of android. And for some reason, Eric and Navad are talking to each other. Anim you know, Eric is very animated, kind of to the side. And D and, and the, the android are kind of, oh, they, they're just talking to each other, huh? And you enter the scene. Uh, let's have a physical description of the doctor. Uh, Winona is um, average height, so about 5'4", five, 5'5". Five, five. She's very curvy, um, very voluptuous. She's got fox-like uh, features, um, so super cute. Uh, she uh, is very fashionable, likes to color coordinate. Um, she always has her medical bag, and oftentimes, um, if it's not dangerous, she'll have Bork with her, which is her adorably cute puppy. Uh, I'm not sure if we have a picture, but if not, I'll just describe him. He's the cutest dog you've ever seen in your life. Colt, can you put the light of that shit? There we go. <laughs> so picture that with, with purple fur, wearing a cable knit sweater. Uh, it's just kind of a, like, if somebody who'd never had a dog had a nightmare about it, what a dog would look like, that's kind of what this thing looks like. And it's real slobbery. Cute. He's so cute. Look. Whoa, you want a treat? Boop, 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 boop. <laughs> Winona, Winona, look. This is Alan Five. Him and Lord Navad had a pissing contest earlier to see who was cooler. I am so sorry, Alan Five. I've been trying <laughs> to mentor Lord Navad on how to just own his personality and all of his flaws. And well, it's just lovely to meet you. I um. You are very interesting. Why, thank you. I, 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 I'm an android and I was, well, I came here looking for someone and it seems like I found a good group of people. Well, Actually, you. Alan is a little bit on, uh, like on the, on the fritz and needs a bit of a man. Do you think that maybe you could look and see if you can apply your doctor your doctoriness to, to his insides? Of course. I open my chest again. <laughs> me sick. <laughs> yeah. So you know how you managed to work on people because you're a veterinarian? Because there's kind of a few things that are similar between animals and people. There's more in common between a Buick and Alan than Alan and a person. Other than topologically. Like when you look in the insides, there's nothing that equates to human biology. I am a veterinarian first, a human doctor second, but I don't really see the difference between humans and animals. We're all sort of one living creature. And um, you, my friend, are you're somewhere on that spectrum, but it's not a spectrum that I have a doctor degree. And actually, I don't have a medical degree per se. My lovely B um, gave me a certificate. Long story short, <laughs> I am unable to help you. However, I can say your style, top notch. I mean, finally, somebody who gets it. I thank you for that. Okay. And he closes his chest and he's kind of takes a second. So where should I go to get fixed? I think maybe we should talk to Bertram, guys. Okay. Yeah. Been able to help me with Jeepers. Maybe Bertram can help us with, uh, with Alan. So D, Bertram lives in a roving community called Wayward. Wayward uses a transmitter that sends a tracking signal to those with receivers tuned to the right frequency. D has one of those. So because they move pretty often, when they set up, they put up a, an antenna, it's not a signal, and the people that need to find them that have the right thing can they get a little tracking signal and they can go there. So, if you wanted to find them, you could. <clears throat> uh, Eric, Navad, anybody you got any thoughts? I can't hear all you doing that thing. I was just wrapping up a conversation with my friend here. Um, I think, uh, <laughs> I think that sounds like a pretty good idea. <clears throat> Well, Go find Bertram. 
yeah, I can I can put a signal out and we can we can get this party rocking. Let's so do you it. want to go outside, flip the switch, and figure out where you're going? Yeah. Okay. Uh, you find out that it is in motion because they get a little, you know, aliens, you know, alien to aliens, a uh, little tracking boop, boop kind of a thing. Uh, wow, that's technical jargon, by the way. I used to do tech support, so I could, you know, the boop boop, I give you all jargon if you want it. There's a little boop boop, and uh, it looks like it's in motion, but it looks like uh, you would want to not walk because they are moving and they have vehicles. You do have gas, though, and you do have the truck. The last time you didn't take the truck because you're going into desolation, and the those desolations rough on trucks. But this is not that. This is in, in the ways it's in the area you're in. Uh, you think you confer with some maps. Who has the highest landlord number? What's the, what's the, who has the highest landlord skill number? I have a four. I have a four. I'm, I'm bad at it. Four, four, a bunch of fours? Yeah. Okay, so you probably end up consulting it together. Get it too, so. uh, it looks like, unless they suddenly change direction or something, it's about a four-day trip by truck. Okay. All right. Do this. All right. So you're going to pile into the truck. Uh, you okay. know because you've been there, deep, <laughs> because you, you've been trading with Bertram. Um, it's a place that's a scavenger caravan. The reason they move is they find a place to do the scavenging. When they've done as much scavenging as they're going to, they head out, they go to another place. It also keeps them safer because, as we talked about before, settlements, as they grow larger and larger, run the risk of eventually attracting the attention of the angels, and that is real bad. Uh, so you're usually better off with smaller communities or nomadic communities. You know it's run by a pair of twins, a brother and sister who share one mind. Uh, one is always with the caravan, the other one is with scouts looking for the next site. And because they share a mind, they, they have a link and they can see what the other one sees. So it's incredibly efficient. Uh, you know the place is very well armed, uh, but they love B, so they embrace you right away. So you know that D will be welcome there. Um, so who is driving, who's shotgun, and who's in back? I think I usually drive and Lord Navad is usually shotgun. But yeah, yeah, it's you yeah, we're bad at combat and also I know as our drivers and she's teaching me. I, I'm still maybe Navad's still kind of learner pit learner permit uh, territory. Okay, so we got uh, Winona at the wheel. Winona at the wheel. It's another novel title, and uh, the other three are going back. And the way the bed's set up, there's actually uh, pipes that have been bolted down. There are various grips, and also on the the top, uh, so that you can stand and fire things like that. So it's been set up to be combat friendly there's also like a big uh truck box in back to put things in it's going to be nice and solid hard to take away uh you probably over the four months reinforced it a little bit uh we've not started using the settlement rules but it's probable given the setup of shire that you will have a garage in which case you may start you know putting armor panels on the thing Stephen taking you know, since you fought the damn believers and they had some machine guns and shit, uh, you probably like, you know, we could armor this pickup truck. That might be a good idea. Uh, so I think you're in the process of doing that. So D's in back, Eric's in back, and Alan's in back. And I think Eric's usually kind of in the middle so they can be on top. Just over the back of the, of the yeah, thing. Yeah, probably even have like a little bipod back there. So it's really easy to set a brace. Uh, which means D, for most of this trip, we're sitting literally facing out. Day one, there's no encounter, so you head out into the, the uh, wasted land. Uh, the wastes, as opposed to desolation, are literally places of, that, have, that have been ravaged by the war, but they're still, you know, ruined America. So you get partially destroyed buildings, you get broken highways, that kind of thing. Um, most of text... Uh, Texon? Not Texon's the real, the real company. Yeah, no, Texon's what we're using. Texon. Most of Texon is like this. I almost said the actual copyrighted name. Um, 
So uh, you will have a little time with Dee and Alan basically being face to face. Is there anything that either of you would be talking about during the day's travel staring at each other? I mean, I'm reading that as like a long, like I like almost a, a, a montage of the terrain changing and them not changing and kind of staring at each other. <laughs> 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 and uh, Eric, the conversation back there is less than scintillating. I'm listening to my, my musica. Oh, you just, <laughs> is uh, is uh, bees uh, yeah. is still in heavy rotation? Yeah. Cool. It's the only song on it anymore. It's just on repeat now. You got the equivalent of like a cross, like a hit clips into Zoom <laughs> and make it cheaper and worse. And he's got one that's kind of like, like an earphone. And uh, B, before she died, recorded Earth, Wind and Fire as I will write a song for you. That there's, is. There's a magic book that only you can blow. I'll write a song for you. You'll write a song for me. And, yep. his and that's all I listened to over and over and over again. And, his <laughs> realize, and I think even at this point, Alan was starting to realize one of the only times you see Eric just smile that's not kind of sardonically is when he's listening to that song. Like he actually smiles. As sad as that may be, sadly, I think it's probably the truth. Day two. About midday, you're looking for a place to maybe pull over and eat while you're not, you know, bucking around. Um, one of the things that you've done, I had to pay someone new because you don't really have a mechanic in the Shire, is to re constantly reinforce and replace suspension and springs because everything's broken here. Like getting, you're almost better off just going over the, the rough dirt and rock because the actual roads are broken. So it's just ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Um, so you want to stop to have lunch that's not going to be that, where it'll be like, you know, like that kind of shit. Uh, you see, and by you, I'm going to say the you will be Navad and Eric because of where you're sitting and what you're paying attention to. Uh, off to the right a little bit, and it's like one of those where you do, you know, it's actually, there's probably an exit sign. We'll say there's an old really worn, one of those where they pay money to say, there's a McDonald's down here. Turn right. off to go destroy your circulation, you know, that kind of shit. Um, right, right. There's a warning sign for a snack stop, and that's a snack, S N A K, no C, just snack stop. And uh, you take a look down there, and most of these places, because um, there are obviously tens of thousands in the uh, the old world, this, this one, unlike most of them that you've seen, doesn't look completely ruined, and you think there's a chance it's not been scavenged so you have the option if you bring this to the attention of the driver to pull over and check it out all right so i kind of slap the top of the truck <laughs> and just go hey snacks <laughs> <laughs> okay well you know that it looks like this snacks place has maybe got like it's not completely destroyed yeah I could actually stretch my legs and I think Bork needs a little walking. So I will go ahead and park the truck. Okay. So you pull off, there's a bit of a side road and uh, there's a little parking lot there. And it's not, it's not quite as, you know, uh, but <laughs> the, uh, the Shire is like a Bucky's. So it's got back in the day it had, you know, one of those that places have 3000 gas pumps, you know, they're, they're enormous. So that place has plenty of room, but this place has maybe four parking spaces. And so it's like a pullover grab, like a, you know, a big chug, you know, and uh, cheap snacks that are terrible for you, that kind of place. And uh, you're able to pull over and there are actually no vehicles that were either they were taken away or they were non parked when the world ended. So it's plenty of parking. So one thing you can say for it, it's got ample parking. So you pull in, and do you unload? Yeah, I kind of jump out of the back. Okay. So it's midday, and uh, those kind of places are mostly plate glass. 
and at least up front. And given what's happened, the chance that any of that glass remains whole is so close to zero that I'm going to say it is largely just shattered glass. So it's window panes. And then you can see in that whole, you know, initial front area. Uh, it's, you know, it's a little shadowed, but some light gets in. Um, it looks like there's still some stuff on the shelves. There is a back area. So you can go in through the front and that that is just hanging half open. It's easy to get in. There's also uh, clearly a, a side and a back door for loading. Uh, what do you want to do? I want snacks. Snacky. Huh. So I need everybody except <laughs> Eric or Alan. So that's going to be Winona, D, and Navad. Uh, make a sense roll. And Navad, this is not the kind you specialize. So it's actually harder. Am I down to die? One lower, yeah. Uh, oh, that's not good. It's not, not mean, what you're attuned to. I got a six. Uh, you got I get a partial, however. I got a six, too. Okay, so all three of you, as you're approaching, you're like halfway between the truck and the building. So you're coming around the front. Um, it, you get a little bit of you feeling sick kind of in your gut. And there's a smell that you feel that tastes like kind of a coppery taste. And you know you're picking up, there's probably radiation in there. So the reason Eric didn't pick it up is he's immune to it. So he wouldn't notice because it's just a place to him. Uh, you're not sure why Alan's not noticing and he may not have a red detector equipped. But the other three of you, you just kind of at the same time, you're like, huh. This isn't, this isn't safe. Not good snacky mouth. This no. Yeah. These snacks might just be for you, Eric. Yeah. That's all right, Bobby. Are, uh... are, are, these, <laughs> are these snacks safe for androids? Oh. Um, see? I'll eat some if you eat some. I, I would think so, but that's not technically a medical... Who's got the highest perception number? Number of dice. Oh, uh, when you, which one? When you oh, say, I'm, I'm sorry. Um, insight. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, no, not insight. The uh, is it notice. Oh, I uh, notice. When you're simultaneously working on three games. Uh, I've yeah, got notice. six. Eric. Okay, so notice. go ahead and roll with one die bonus. So when you have group things like this, sometimes you have one person roll, one die higher because he's rolling for all of you. Oh, yes. There I have noticed. Movement inside the uh, snack stuff. Hmm. Can, we, can I tell what size movement? Like bug-sized movement? Critter-sized movement? Between a person and a dog. Huh. So large dog, small person. Or sneaky All right. person. All right. So, I mean, my inclination is to pull Karen and just continue to walk inside because I'm hungry. <laughs> I like the idea that he notices the thing. The camera sees you notice it, kind of like a Romero movie. And we just cut to your face going, huh. And you just pull your gun out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to take this with Eric being <laughs> in the lead. And the three of you that had the kind of warning hang back a little bit. Uh, Alan, where are you? Okay. Alan, where are you? Oh, I, I, I will be as close to D as I think uh, Alan's sticking I'll hold with D. Oh, <laughs> so so heart beeps. She's still through for the next about thirty-five seconds. Um, so Eric, yeah, I think you're going to get a different response to this news that most other people would have. If suddenly you were in a target-rich environment. What would the response be? What would the look on your face become? Joy, like absolute not, joy. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, like has happened to you before, uh, sometimes you encounter ghouls, and so ghouls are people that are so seriously ravaged by radiation that the tissue starts to break down. They become voraciously hungry, and they end up being translucent skinned, gaunt, 
Uh, and if they don't have food and apparently like candy and like, you know, uh, uh, Tostitos don't count as food for ghouls, they torpor, they shut down. And sometimes when they, they feel something close, they reanimate, which allows them to live decades. Because if they're starving and we're going to die, they just, you know, go on the ground. And then the minute you come close, they go, oh, blood. And they wake up and they attack. So there is a group of ghouls. It's enough of a group that you cannot quickly count them. So at least something in the order of a half dozen, but there is a burst of ghoul attack coming your way. So I'm going to need everyone to roll your speed dice. And uh, Ify, it's in the lower left-hand corner of your sheet. Okay. And in this case, you're rolling the dice and adding them up. So Eric, okay. what's your total? 16, 21, 29. Three. D, what you got? She's on mute. D's on mute. <laughs> What'd you roll? Wait, hold on. Six, 12, 18, uh, 34. Holy shit. Wow. Uh, Navad, what'd you roll? Oh, terrible. Thir oh, terrible. Eight. Eight. Oof. <laughs> oh, my. Uh, 25. Oh, nice. So, For some reason, I keep hearing Ellen, not Alan, and then my brain's <laughs> like, "Oh no, you heard the wrong thing." And then Ellen Alan, Five. Like, uh, no, no, yes, is on the other. Yes, my yes. brain is malfunctioning too. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. Yeah, yeah if, you, if you were uh, Alan, you'd have to dance more, and you'd be a little problematic. Uh, okay, so Boss. the first thing that's going to happen because of the triggering action. So, do you're not going to go first? The, uh, Eric will go first because he's the one that's starting the combat. Uh, you're just going to unload one of these guys? Yeah, how much? What's my range? Uh, this is going to be uh, close. Hmm. Oh, no, I'm sorry, near. They're not in your face yet. Yeah, I should. Second, I sh second category. Okay, yeah, I'm in. Blast them. Yep, so two, four. So I, I lose one now, for, but I gain one for my favorite weapon, right? The, the new number should just be there. It is. I think, I think okay. it's success. I got two sixes. Sweet. Damage. And the way the new thing you picked up is um, uh, what the hell is the name of it? Um, it's not Savage. It's a good name for a skill one. Uh, Slayer. Slayer. Uh, you have Slayer. So once per combat, if you don't get any crits on the damage roll, you can use it to re-roll your damage roll. Sweet. Ooh. I'm gonna I'm gonna stick to this. What is their uh, armor? Uh, two. They're rubbery. Uh, they're rubbery, easy to kill nightmares. All right. So I was uh, over two with all six of my dice, and I have an exploding six with a crit. So uh, one rule also that's gonna be six plus your three is nine. Plus another one. Oh no, I didn't get a six. So yeah. So it's, it, nine is actually enough to kill it in one shot. Nice. So as these things come out, he just. Karen comes out and he blows one away. Um, D, what does Alan see as you click into combat mode? What does that look like? Oh, um, so I just, uh, I look at him and I just say, protect yourself and have fun. And then I like do a little bit of like my crane moment and then I activate into uh, aggressive stance mode and my eyes go a little bit cloudy. Cool. Do you want to uh, want to attack one? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna do brawl melee. Okay. And then, hold on. Uh. Ooh, nice. Yeah. I got okay. a ten of five. Then do your damage. Sorry. Do your damage. Oh, okay. Do I add those? No, no. This is the, the so what would you roll? Just roll, give me the number. Three sixes. <laughs> Holy Oh shit. my god. What's your crit number? Oh I think it's up to three. Yes. It's one of the things your martial arts is improving. So that's gonna be 12 points of damage already. Then re-roll <laughs> the sixes because they're exploding. 
So re-roll those three sixes to let me know if you get any more sixes. I guess, I guess. So as as D is rolling that, like she's like it's all hand to hand, right? Huh? It's all she's just going full hand to hand, right? Oh yeah. yeah. So I remember she doesn't care. I remember when well. D fought before. Like in my mind, she's like. Um, for anybody who watches One Piece, she's like Sanji, and she it's just like, like can kick. She's like River from Firefly. Kick. She's like River from Firefly. Okay. Right, but yes. like with just like foot, foot first. Yep. Oh yeah. So oh yeah. That is enough damage to just describe for me what happens to the ghoul. Remember that they are rubbery flushed, and they are much easier to cause horrific damage to. Um, so, uh, I, I, I pull one of these numbers and then I pop my foot out and do just like a very intense series of like, bah, 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 and then the whole time I'm just giggling, like, <laughs> oh God. So oh as God, you're doing I'm that, so she terrified. not even noticed, but anyone seeing out of the corner of her mind, of their eye would know the thing was undone after the first couple of kicks so she's just knocking chunks out of it and it's just kind of standing there and then it collapses all mangled and just drops and she's clearly issuing like a can you give me like a a, a little delighted giggle <laughs> but yeah it's, it's awful okay uh alan what do you want to do there are ghouls Okay, so Alan, you know, is a pacifist and doesn't l want to fight these ghouls. So uh, Alan uh, is, is is trying to reason with them. I was like, please stop. Please stop. Um, There's no need to rush us. Alan, We're just passing through. <laughs> Alan, give me a uh, notice check. All right. Um, <laughs> So notice that's going to be it. five. Oh my god! Uh, that's 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 uh, <laughs> I, I'm not noticing anything. <laughs> so he's actually walking forward a little bit, talking to them. <laughs> um, the rest of you will all see that they are just ravening, basically mindless, and he's just very sincerely trying to engage with them and talk them down trying to convince them, like, leave the highways alone, just drive safely, just don't be a dick. Like, let's all just reason and get through this together. And the ghouls, like ghouls tend to be, just kind of aren't listening. Um, all right, then we go to the bad guy. No, 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 the, the, it's the bug. Oh, it's it's me. So how, yeah. how far away am I from these guys? They're still at uh, uh, near... So the second range category, you're you're just outside. You've not gone in. I think uh, at this point, Eric and D are in there mixing it up. You know, among the racks that have like the the condoms and the old like bandage tape and the 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 Magnum Triple X B. You know, an Iron Mule and bed pills, all that shit. They're fighting right. in there. It also sounds like okay. Alan is kind of walking forward into it. You know, the sand is. <laughs> So you and Winona are still outside. All is well. <laughs> yeah. Um. But they're so they're far enough away. Like, and there's some coming out at us. Well, no, you have a funny feeling they're just going to engage the ones that are in there. Um, ghouls, and you've encountered them in stream at least twice. They're yeah. lifeotropic. So the fact that they're in there mixing it up, they'll just go ahead and eat your friends. All right, so I'm gonna. I'm probably not. Um, hmm. You have plenty of ways to get line of sight because all the big, you know, panel windows are all broken. So you can just walk to the side. And you'll get plenty of, you know. Right. I'm gonna move towards them and see if I can. Like, I'm not gonna cast a spell yet, but I'm gonna see if I can get close enough to maybe next round. Like. Oh no. Oh, he's been time stopped by the ghouls. Uh, oh. <laughs> Maybe blast some of them. As okay. I still hold his hand. So uh, at this point, unfortunately, before Winona goes, uh, the 
they ignore Alan. So they don't seem to be androidotropic. So they're not seeing him as food. So they don't seem to give a crap that he's there. But that means that three ghouls will attack Eric and three ghouls will attack D. Sweet. Bring it on. You have a different view of the world than I do, my friend. <laughs> I, want, I want chicharrones, brother. <laughs> that's fair. Uh, that's a near miss on you. That's going to be one, two, and one, two, three, four, five. Then it's going to be halved. That's going to be three hits for D. It was a good movie. Remember that one? Three hits for D? Yep. And, Tara uh, Black was in that, right? Yeah. It was a sequel to uh, Five Meals for Sister Sarah. Yep. Uh, I got a near miss on Eric. Well, these, shockingly, the ghouls suck. Uh, it's going to be... It's not been very... Yeah. Four. So you're going to take two hits, Eric. All right. And then why not? Uh, I, am I in a range that I could shoot one of them? You absolutely could. You would just... You're all coming kind of this way. Just kind of step to the side and fire. So I'm going to try to shoot at them. And I fail miserably. But I still muster up the courage that Eric has taught me. And I don't let that get me down. Nice. <laughs> so you're going to have swagger despite the miss? Shoot, shoot. Missed by like a mile. Did and you I get still... any ones? Um, yeah, I got one one. Okay, so the gun does not jam. Unless, of course, the jam is a bastard and uh, uses the bad karma to make the gun explode in your hand, which he does. Uh, so you're going to need to make a reaction save, please. What? Uh, okay, so... Um, Roll confidently. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, love that, I love that the gun it just like, explodes in her hand and she's like, I got this. I'm, you know, it, it blows up and then you like blow your fingers, you know. <laughs> got it. <laughs> Okay, so I got all three fours for the reaction. Okay, so that means you're going to take this as damage. Uh, wow. You take one hit, but the gun yeah. is no more. And that's one of the problems with this stuff is it's all at least 100 years old. And sometimes, you know, I actually know friends with antique guns. And one thing is occasionally they just fail. It's uh, probably because you dropped it last episode. I did drop and, that. Um, and it bent. Celebrating too hard, yeah. Yep. The firing pin bent. <laughs> but it is just an extension of me. I am not an extension of it. You tell me. Yes. So you carry off the exploding gun with, with Panache. Uh, oh. D, do you want to end another goal? Absolutely. Okay, go ahead and attack. Okie dokie. Two, three, two, three. Oh, holy shit. Uh, mostly one, so absolutely not. It's like if you set a rainbow bright to murder. Very <laughs> strange. Uh, okay, so you don't hit. Um, uh, Eric, you're up. I'm going to try to double shot. I don't blame you. They're not hard targets. Oh, whatever. Speak for yourself. And uh, I am successful with my double shot. Hard, let, me, let me modify that. They're not hard targets for Eric. I think that's more fair. You Eric stay is, confident. Why? You're good. You're our favorite gun monkey, man. <laughs> All right. So you said they have two? Sorry? Oh, yeah. yeah the their, their armor's two. So um, I got three plus one of them is a six. So that's, that's it. And crit. then I roll damage again for the second so shot. They have six hits. So that's one kill. Oh my. Uh, so I got um, all six are over two, and then I got two sixes. You can keep rolling if you want to, but go ahead and describe. I got another six. <laughs> it rolled that again. And another six. And again. And another six. Again, keep going. And a five. Uh -huh. so that's four, six, that's uh, uh, 15, 18 points of damage on a creature that had six. Okay, so, so it turns to look at me and goes, uh-huh, and opens its <laughs> mouth. And then what you see is in a second, 
the uh, everything but its tongue is gone, just gone, like va like vaporized, like like powder, and the tongue just kind of like like hangs for just a second. You could swear it was still going huh? in the middle of the air, and then it just kind of like falls to the ground. So it's, so Alan, your new friend. It's like a Daffy not, Duck cartoon. They do not appear to be pacifists. <laughs> Uh, go ahead and give me another uh, notice check for uh, Alan. All right. Come on. All right. I got uh, one success, two fives. There is a ghoul sitting in the back corner of the room reading a comic book. So I start walking towards that ghoul's Hello, friend. Can you talk to your friends to tell them to calm down? Why don't they read comic books like you? So that wouldn't work with anyone but you, but because you're effectively invisible to them, they don't notice you. You just walk right past them. Uh, so we'll get right back to how that resolves in a sec. Uh, and then Navad, you can totally... Uh, D has three opponents. Eric has one. D has three? Does, yes. But I've watched now in rapid succession D kick one into shreds, and, and then, then Eric and then, and then Eric Daffy Duck Bill spinning around his head on the other yeah. one. Yeah, they're doing real well. Um, I'm gonna can I so I can kind of sneak. I'm gonna sneak up on one behind D. I feel like my magic is not needed here. I'm going to just like try to knife one. Okay. So I also want to kind of impress D maybe because she's been teaching me to move better. You had also the whole last round, so you can go ahead and I'm snuck up. Go ahead and give me a stealth check. A stealth? Yeah. Uh, it's okay. funny that this group is so not sneaky. I think this is the first stealth check you've ever rolled. This is the first stealth check I've ever rolled. So uh, and the entire all campaign. Of I don't think the, anyone... I yeah, think I think never that's rolled a, a stealth I check think ever. only Tiber Fane rolled and he's an NPC. Yeah, so Tiber he, Tiber rolled it when he snuck into the uh, Baron's place with to yeah. plant the bomb. Yeah. While, yeah. while I was well, while I was dorking out. You were out burning front. your head out front. When I burned my head out front. Um I'm really bad at all of the survival skills, just FYI. So we'll that's see fine. how I do. Oh, I fail miserably. Okay, D, he's sneaking like a six year old sneaks. So, you know, like the sneak, sneak, Like big, sneak. big, clotty steps. Yep. So the upshot is you try to be all, all smooth, but when you attack, it turns to face you immediately. So go ahead and do a brawl melee and stab him. Okay. I'm a little yeah. better at that. Uh, uh, nope. No dice. Okay. So D, you would pick up that he looks like because again, he's not super subtle. He's clearly trying to peacock. So is it like, how does that strike you? Like, is it cute that he's failing and being awkward? Or is it pathetic? Oh, yeah. Or? No, I'm dying. Like, as red as my cheeks can get. <laughs> and I love the fact that your, your emotional self, like your body is in mechanical kill mode. Mm -hmm. The other part of your brain is over here like, oh, that's adorable. Yeah. Like sort of simultaneously. <laughs> all right. Uh, all right. They, they get to attack. Terrible. I've got one on Nevada. Cool. Right. Uh, and he gets a partial. That's going to be one, two, three, four, down to two. Two hits on Nevada. Okay. And then I got uh, two of them attacking. And they get a partial. Oh, wow, they cannot catch a break. Poor ghouls. Uh, oh, that's pretty good, actually. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Divided by two, you take five hits, D, and that means you're going to have to take an injury. What? Wow. Oh, no. Yeah, weird. Fighting has consequences, I know. No. no. <laughs> How many more clones do we have? I'm a perfect baby uh, angel. Gosh. Five. Uh, Eric, I only have one because you dusted the others. They'd be afraid if they could be afraid, but they're just not. Uh, it hits. It's not a partial. It gets to hit. And it does two hits. Womp, womp. 
Uh, why? You can't shoot no more because gun is dead. What do you do? I have a, it says stabber, so I'm going to think I, that must be a knife. Hold your knife? Yeah, you probably have a, what kind of a knife would Winona carry? Oh, um, she would carry like a ant <laughs> antique, of course, um, like silver, sterling silver with engraved. Have you sharpened a silver cake knife? Because they come with like the fake uh, pearl handles like that. I, the, it, yeah, okay, so she's got like a sharpened, deadly wedding cake knife to kind of give away at the end as a present. Uh, all right, serve up ghoul. Go ahead and make a brawl melee. All right. So she steps in, and are you helping D? Um, yes. Okay. <laughs> I am not the knife. <laughs> oh, yes. Success. So stab, stab that ghoul. So go ahead and do your damage. Oh, yeah, I forgot. I got so excited. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. For a stabber. Uh, yeah, one six. Okay, so that's going to be one, and then it's uh, your crit is two on that, right? Yes. Okay, so reroll the six. Let me know if you get another six. No, I got a five. Okay, so he's wounded, not down. So you literally plunge the server into him. And I'm going to say, because he's so soft, you end up making a cut almost like you're serving cake, uh, which is gruesome and terrible, but that's where we are. Uh, then we go back over to Eric. You have one opponent left. Well, then I will shoot him. That, I will shoot that opponent. Yeah, given your Terminator <laughs> list of options, I think just to shoot the goal might be the easiest solution. Did we did we figure out what happened with is Alan still off talking to comic book ghoul? He's almost next. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So I have hit, strangely. I will, will not forget forget poor pacifist Alan Fox. Yeah, just hanging out reading <laughs> reading Sergeant Rock over in the corner. Yeah, the, the upside is Alan is basically in no danger. Oh my. Okay. Well I have uh, so I got them all again and two sixes. Oh my god. And one more six. And that's it. So what happens to this one? Um, do they have brains? Kind of. They're very um, kind of like head cheese. Oh, nice. So um, so he is so kind of soft and doughy that the bullet enters. And uh, before it kind of leaves, it almost <laughs> expands. So it it blows out of the back of his head so big that it's like a half moon, like the the uh, that one Doctor Who episode where they had the spoon men. And, oh, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and it blows the a giant spoon into the back of his head, and he just like completely uh, sinks to his knees and goes, huh, oh, and then falls over. Al, Alan, you're in the corner of the room. The ghoul is sitting crisscross applesauce. And he's reading a comic book, uh, and it's called Future Man. And he is crying green, glowing tears. Oh. Hmm. 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 <laughs> he mutters, tries to mutter, comic book, and part of his throat comes out of his mouth. I, I, I reach my hand out to like pick it up and push it back to his face. Yes, friend, that's what you're reading, a comic book. Make a notice check to understand the next thing he says. <laughs> because he only has part of his vocal equipment left. <laughs> All right. Come on, Dice. You <laughs> failed me many times at this point, but this is time for your redemption. Ah, two successes. He utters the very Romero horror movie tropey 
kill me. Oh. So upon hearing this, uh, Alan stares uh, as if lost in thought uh, and uh, truly for much too too long. He, he ponders this. Well, the, uh, Ron, well, the Ron will definitely pass. <laughs> we'll come back to you. Uh, but that is a completely dramatically appropriate response. Uh, we're then going to go back to Navat. You're still fighting the ghoul. I still have one on me, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think just where we are, I think I still need to kind of try to fight him by stabbing. Okay. I'm going to fight him with a knife. Well, melee. Okay. Take this, Mr. Ghoul. Oh, I got a partial on this one. I'm not very good yes, at brawl melee. Do your damage and then have whatever it is. Uh, okay, damage and half. What's their uh, what's their hit? Two. Their armor class is two. Two against everything. The wrong All right, I got to see what a stabber does. Uh, 3D, right? I think it's three with a two crit. You're kind of shit. Uh, okay, so I got a one, so that's no good, but I got a three and I got a six, so. One, two, three, four. I'll reroll the six. Okay. Oh, I got another six. So that's going to be uh, an again. Okay. And then a four. Okay. We would not kill. You did almost exactly this. You did exactly the same amount of damage that went on and did with her dagger. So okay. if you feel better about yourself, you're both stabbing away Look, at the, the ghouls. Winona and I roll the same dice almost every episode. So that's um, actually true. It is. And she, you know, she's like, she's like my, the mom that I didn't have. So I'm like, uh-huh. you know, as long as we're rolling the same, I'm good. All right, and then we go to, and we did, did we, did I miss? Yeah, I think I missed D. Yeah, D, you didn't get around this round. I need to forget about me, gosh. I never forget about you, you <laughs> sister. Okay, Um. well, I'm going to, I'm going to try to do some fancy footwork a la Chromio one more time. Do it, for all melee. You're still in aggressive stance, right? Yes. Have not left aggressive stance. Cool. Um, cool. Got a success, so now I'm going to roll my damage. Do that damage. They can pay for being a victim of nuclear war. <laughs> oh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, you're not adding up the dice. Oh, whoops. Okay, so then a six, a oh. uh, uh, it was a six, a three, a two, and then I rerolled the six again and got a one. That's going to be four, six. So that's six points of damage, you kill one. Uh, it's not high enough that you get a special description, you just kill it. Okay. Uh, all right, and then they get to attack, and they definitely would run by now, but they don't know any better. So now I got one each on Wynonna, D, and Navad, and that's the only ones that are left. Okay. So Wynonna, I hit you. And I get uh, uh, you take four hits, but no injuries. That's not too bad. D, mm-hmm. I hit, but I get a partial, and that's no damage gets through your armor. That's right. But the fact that oh, you're not wearing armor. No, you. Oh, no, the, yeah, fact you wearing, the fact that you're wearing leather armor made a difference. <laughs> a I know that. And Nevada, your hit. Uh, uncharacteristic Nevada in melee combat. Uh, that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, and then so you take five hits, Nevada, and that's Ooh. an injury. Okay, so uh, five hits for me. It takes me down to six, and then I roll the roll the injury dice, right? Yeah, I just fill one of the locations. Exactly. Okay, so just uh, FYI, I'm filling in box four. Thank you. And why not? You're up again. Do you want to cake serve him up? <laughs> yes. Hey, yeah. go ahead. Stab him up, Brawl Melee. See if I can uh, cut another piece of wedding cake. <laughs> yeah, serve him up. Nice day for a white wedding. Oh, no. <laughs> My cockiness just got me again. Keep going, Winona. <laughs> you got this. <laughs> I 
wish well, there was any real cake. This feels like a frosting face moment. Ha! Uh, D, you're up. Wee! A D. You got one opponent left. Ooh. Uh, I got a partial. Okay. Roll your damage. And then, so just roll your dice. Let me know what they are, and I'll calculate it for you. God. Uh, it is a five. <laughs> a two, a two, and a one. Two, two, no, that's 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 a two points because the two twos are equal oh, to the okay. armor. It is a couple of points, but that is not a kill. Uh, okay, then we're gonna go to Eric and his big gun. Uh, there's now three wounded ghouls, and who who took the most who took the most damage, and can I tell? No, they're all kind of wounded. All right, um, let me shoot the one on Winona. Do it. And I missed. Alan, make an inside check for me. Oh, my. Did I say Alan again? Oh, did you? Did, oh, did you <laughs> Yeah, I, you did. I thought to you me? were talking. I also thought yeah. you were talking to Eric, Mike. Yeah, Alan, yeah. Alan, make an inside check. Inside, okay. <laughs> Jesus Christ, Mike. Oh, sorry. <laughs> check your inside. I was so serious. I was like, yeah. When is yeah. Alan gonna speak up? One <laughs> 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 success in three fives. Okay, so as far as Alan can tell, you think that this creature. When it woke up, saw the comic book, and something stirred what was left of its brain. So unlike the other ones that immediately went feral, this one did not, but is clearly only shreds of what it was are left. Yeah, and uh, so yeah, I do like stare, uh, like, you know, really hearing the words kind of resonate and rattle around my head. And it's at that point I like solemnly and quietly uh, try to either uh, behead or crush the head of this ghoul uh, <laughs> in a very um, humane way. It, it is far more '80s movie cinematic if the the android's hands come up and almost <laughs> take affectionate on the sides of his head, right? Like yeah. comic yeah. books, I understand. And mm -hmm. then the squeeze and the eye pop. And then the just, you know, it's uh, uh, it's Roy Batty killing the guy from uh, in yep. uh, Blade Runner when he the 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 CEO. <laughs> well, it, except if Roy Batty was like a really kind, like a yeah. super, like, <laughs> <laughs> if, or or it's Neil Patrick Harris killing that dude in Undercover Brother that he squishes. His <laughs> <face>. <laughs> uh, okay, um, so in some cases. Executing someone flips you over to bad karma. Um, spoiler alert, it does not in this case. So we go to uh, Navad. You see that, by the way. You're facing the right direction, and you see Alan walked up to one that was sitting in the corner. You didn't make your perception roll, so you didn't know what he was doing. So okay. as far as you know, he walked up on one that was up on the sidelines, and he has just smashed his head with his bare hands. So, hmm. I'm trying to see, like, if I would, like, I'm, I'm now at this point, I'm more interested in that than fighting the ghoul that's still on me, but just, that just hit me. Is there a way that I can, that I can understand what went down? Not without more data. You, you need to get some other glimpse of something to, to connect a dot or even Alan's face. Like literally you just see the back of his head and he crushes the thing and there's an explosion of gore. Okay. I'm going to kind of give a like, hey, hey, wait a minute. Finger, fingers up to the ghoul. Like, the excuse ghoul? me for a second. And I'm going to kind of make my way over to Alan because I'm just more interested in this than the fight. If, if you would expend your good karma, 
the ghoul's broken circuitry will actually respond to the hold of the minute, and he will hold and let you leave. Yeah, yeah. I want the, in this case, I'm going to use the good karma and just be like, "Hey, just, just a sec. Hold so on." So the ghoul literally just goes, like something somewhere in his brain. It, I, it works. I, uh, I, I read a, I read a thing with a, I read a thing of a like a, a famous uh, photographer who had discovered in taking photos of people and cultures all across the world that like the, that as far as he could determine the only universal hand gesture was hold that pose of like oh, really? fingers up and like That's everybody, awesome. yeah, everybody got it. Like That's across the world, awesome. people who, you know, barely ever been photographed before that they understood. So, uh, anyway, That's, awesome. That's what I'm doing to the ghoul. So just, just a second, just a second. So what I'm going to do, because of the time it is, the fact that we're about on break, D and why not? We're going to finish D and and Eric are going to finish the remaining active opponents, because clearly, the rule of mechanics, in my point of view, is use mechanics when the outcome of a situation is uncertain. You have D and fucking Eric. If you can't get rid of three goals, you're fired and should go retire. So we're going to put you to the background of that scene fighting mopping them up as the bod walks over to alan alan the skinny kid is walking up you're now covered in gore up to your elbows hey there buddy <laughs> hello um what happened I gave the ghoul his wish. Oh, what did he wish? He asked me to kill kill him. Oh. So in Nevada at this point, you would see, because he didn't do any force, right? Because he squished him like this. So it's still sitting, and it's still holding the comic book in its cross-legged lap. Which is real weird for a ghoul. He wanted you to kill him? Yes, he asked me. Eric, can I get a woot as you kill one spectacularly? Um, hey, this happened to me one time. Uh, a guy asked me to kill him. How do you, how do you feel? And Alan stares right in Vod's eyes, takes a beat and says, what is death? I think literally at that moment, D throws a ghoul <laughs> over some shelving and it's impaled on a, a sandy of racks. Uh, and as the what is death echoes off, we cut away from the scene because that is clearly where that ends. Uh, we're going to do our five minute bio break. When we come back, uh, we are going to continue on with your journey. So the team pulls away from the snack stop. They spent a couple of hours scavenging the place. Uh, they end up with a box that Eric writes on it, Eric food only, which he's able to figure out by the fact that his friends pick it up and your skin burns a little bit, but Eric's doesn't. He literally has a, a separate stats, you know, a separate bin of irradiated uh, candies and snack cakes that are fine for him to eat, but pretty much not okay for anybody else. You do discover that Alan can absolutely throw those into the Mr. Fusion that is his digestive system with no ill effects. So uh, the other stuff you get out of the place is the the dry goods you would get out of any bodega. So like shoelaces, dice, but I'm currently working on uh, all the big shopping lists for Nuked. And a pair of plastic dice is actually worth about 40 volts. 
So you come away with a couple of boxes of real worthwhile stuff uh, because anything that was produced post fall, they call relics and is more treasured than the stuff they're making now for nostalgia reasons, the fact they can't work plastic anymore. It's the fact that you've got like a handful of plastic dice. You can trade real well for that stuff. You'd get like a deck of cards. So you've squirreled that all away in the, the hard box in the truck. And uh, the next day while you're traveling, uh, there is a point where uh, Navad has wheedled Winona a bit. Like, let me drive. I could drive. I'm doing well, aren't I? I'm watching. Let me drive. I could drive. And finally, Winona, all right. So Navad, very carefully driving the car, Winona's in back and is having a discussion with Alan about death. And then when B died, I realized that I just can't pretend anymore that death is real. And I've seen patients die, but they've just, they've been patient. And as a doctor, you have to distance yourself from that. Otherwise, you know, you're going to feel all that pain. And so I, I painted like an imaginary bubble and and I cared about the things I think that people cared about before the fall, like fashion and mm, soap operas and people must have cared about fine art and the Beatles. Um, so I <laughs> learned about all that stuff and that became my life. But now I'm realizing the team needs me to be more of a fighter and I can't just hang back anymore. I don't want anyone. I don't want to lose D now. I don't want to lose anybody. And death is real. And I'm scared of it. Hmm. Well, uh, I get, 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 yes. I can only, um, hmm. Then Alan leans in close to Winona. Can I die? I think to die, you had to have been born. And I think you, in a way, were born. It was just different than the way most of us were born. And so I think your death would be different but I don't think it would be painful the way our deaths might be painful or are going to probably be painful. So I think that even if you can die, it'll just be like done. And then Alan takes his hand and holds his chest and ponders. I don't want to die. Well, no one wants to die. That's the thing about it is we're born and we all know this is temporary and we're not supposed to get attached, but then we find ourselves attached to people and, you know, like Lord Navad up there. I mean, heck, he could kill us now with his driving, but I'm giving him a chance. And the more I get to know him, the more fall in love, like not romantic love, but like avuncular love. And, and with you, I think, have you, do you have someone that you're close to that, I mean, you're number five, I don't know what happened through one through four or six through infinity. No, everyone I know has already died. How'd that make you feel? I, I, I don't know. I mean, logically one can assume that they lived a happy life before I disappeared and they died, but I guess I just don't know. You disappeared before they died? Well, yes, I was hit 
by what I can assume was an EMP blast, and I woke up. Now. Well, how do you know they died? If I was to estimate a guess, how long ago was it when I was last uh, conscious? I, I think you would. It would have been one of the first things you try to nail down. You think it's been a century? Well, it's been one century. Ooh, yeah. And most humans don't last that long. No, we, they, most <laughs> living things don't last that long. I'm so sorry that you lost everyone that you were hit by a blast, but we could be your new friends in, do you know how long your lifespan is? Well, as of right now, I'm dying. You could just be um, glitching. And if we find um, someone that can fix you, then, then we can fix you. Okay. We will. We'll, we'll try our hardest, okay? Okay. okay. Navad, up ahead, there is something growing on beside the road. There's growth over the entire area up ahead. Like over the road? Yep. Over and on it. Like uh, a whole patch. Like and vegetation. Yep. You can't quite see what it is because, again, you're seeing it in distance. As you get closer, I'll give you more of a, de a description, but there's definitely something there. Okay. Um, is So I'm just driving by myself. Is anybody up in the front with me? Um, I'd say D would want to be up there, right? Okay. Yeah. Uh, so she looks over at you with that smile. <laughs> hey, He's D. driving pretty well, but there's the occasional, you know, ka-chunk. Right. Um, hey, there's a... Look, there's, um, there's like stuff over the road, up here. Let's, let's. Um, I'm gonna start slowing down a little bit. And I'm gonna give a little tap on the window or whatever, and kind of point. Yeah, Eric's always right back there. Forward, just to kind of be like, hey, I'm gonna start slowing down. Yeah, Eric, um, you can see it, and when you look through Karen, uh, it's mushrooms. Hmm. What do I know about mushrooms? A lot of things. You got to narrow it down. Do I know about special yeah. mushrooms? There are any number of special mushrooms. Uh, oh. Biodiversity, you know, it's dropping these bombs because a lot of them were radioactive, but the other ones were uh, chemical weapons and biological weapons. It's like you dropped Australia. So, given the rate of mutation, uh, there are all kinds of different mushrooms. Okay. So I pound, I pound the roof again, exactly the same way as I did before. I went snacks. <laughs> All right, so you're gonna go ahead and drive into the mushroom patch. Let's drive up to it. Okay. So it's um, gradual, right? So it's like a gradient. So at the front end, it's here and there, and then it will get denser and denser as you go further. So right. do you stay completely out of it or do you wait till it becomes denser? Catching iffy up, you're driving into a patch of mushrooms. Okay. Or maybe not. It's up to Nevada. He's at Nevada at the Wheel, another good album. Yeah. Um, so, like, how, like, what are we talking? Are we talking like little toadstooly looking mushrooms? Like, are we yeah. talking? Yeah, but you think they get bigger the further in you go. Like, they're they're kind of smaller on the on the periphery and then well and some mushrooms work like that right like almost like koi like the ones that are kind of older growth they just get bigger and bigger right so this looks kind of like that it's the center of whatever this is it looks like they get bigger and bigger but out here they're like like that um okay i kind of want to just like stop and ask like confab with everybody of um if you think i should guys do you look there's mushrooms all over the road i don't really have experience driving in mushrooms so 
Should I keep going? Should we try to drive around it? I um, love the sentence, I don't have experience driving in mushrooms. Yeah. <laughs> I don't do that. I have experience math. driving on mushrooms, my friend. <laughs> What do you guys think? Should we just keep going forward? Uh, why don't we take a look? Okay. Huh? So let's stop and we're going to go investigate this giant mushroom patch or the, you know. Everyone roll a d6. Let me know if anyone gets a four. Nope, three. I got a one. One time I get a six. Yeah. So you're, order, baby. you're walking around and, and again, it's little patches here and there. And they're everywhere from like this big to maybe this big. And kind of like a putty color with a brown cap with some spots, like fairly typical mushroom looking. And you you were joking before, but do do we know, does anybody know anything about these mushrooms? Do so we... make a landlord roll. So this will be Eric along. Okay, I, I have four on my landlord. And this is Sorry. things, by the way, looking forward. If you wanted to buy the expertise feat, Eric could literally buy expertise illicit drugs. Nice. Well, I have a I have a six, so clearly uh, I have enough expertise. I have a six as well. Well, only Eric was looking at this. Point. Oh, yeah. Um, okay. So you look. This is not any of the varieties you know, and does not look to be at least visually related to the ones you know are safe or dangerous. So this is a new variety you're not aware of. Okay. Uh, Winona, you can make a landlord check one die down. And let me know if you get two successes. I know that's very specific, but there's a thing going on. And she might have, she might do it. You never know. Nope, oh, did not get two. Okay, seconds. that's fine. I will assume that whenever something like that happens, Winona is maybe like readjusting or like, you know. <laughs> She, she seems to be really on it and then sometimes not. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, what do you do? I mean, can we go Can we go forward or does it get too thick at some point for us to be able to actually drive through them? You can absolutely drive through. I mean, you'll be, it'll be a little like, you know, a little squishy because there's mushrooms. Yeah, yeah oh. I want to run up to them and squish one with my foot and see what happens. Okay. You uh, hear. <laughs> oh boy. I look at my foot. What's under my foot? What happened? Is it honey? And blood? Okay, I drop to my I drop to the ground and I look at the little mushrooms and I'm like, one oh my gosh, what did up? I just do to one of you? I'm it, so sorry. It puts its eyes and goes. Why? Oh I'm, no. I didn't mean to. I'm so sorry. Hi. And then you hear. I turn to Navad and everybody, and I'm like, we gotta go. Wait, there, there is an enormous mushroom up ahead. <laughs> uh, can I have the uh, the slide, please? Um, Winona, you have a creature catalog. Uh, you know those things are called megumes. Uh, megumes are mega legumes. Uh, they are sentient carnivorous mushrooms. They are fiercely defensive of their territory, very hard to kill but slow moving, and they can be reasoned with. Oh, okay, good. Uh, all right, I just let everyone know. Um, and <laughs> whoever has the. <laughs> The best uh, persuasion, or uh, so there's one coming at you at about twelve miles an hour. That's about sixteen feet tall, and it has another big one that's about seven feet tall, walking along next to it. And the the bottoms move kind of like snails because they don't have legs, so it kind of undulates forward, and the the crown bobs as it moves. I hate it. Wait, right. okay, so Winona, they can be reasoned with? I think we should reason with them. They I'm can. out. Okay, Eric, you're D, out. D, some of the mushrooms around your ankles 
are bludgeoning your ankle because they're angry. Is this like spirited away like the little soot sprites? Like it's doing no little, damage, it pickles? No damage at all. Because again, it's like take a wet celery stalk and fill it with blood and then just kind of pump it on your on your boot. Okay, it's, it's so not gonna hurt you. I'm trying Do it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you have celery in the kitchen, you have some extra blood. <laughs> oh wait, Eric, do you think I you're saying attack now? No, 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 I was kidding. I was I was okay, saying God, okay. take a celery stock. No, definitely not do it now. No, 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 no. Okay, so I'm slowly trying to back away into the into the vehicle, but at the same time, I'm kissing my hand and trying to. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> on all the little like mushroom heads that are hitting me. One of them does this thing. You hear it go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Can sorry. I, Can so I look the, at the mushroom that? D stepped on to see if I can repair him or her. Or oh, it's you, dead. You don't have uh, Xenology yet, right? No, you're right. I don't think so. Okay, so that's certainly, we should build into your role playing that you've like started to collect books yeah. and talk to people to learn that because that's the ability that will allow you to use veterinary on monsters and mutants. So you kind of look, and this could be like a reason you do it, right? Like you pick it up and go, this is like what celery with blood and eyes and I don't even know how this would work. Yeah, so I noticed holding it, looking confused. Uh, so there is a really big megum waddle stomping its way over. What does anyone do? Uh, I definitely think we should try to reason with it, friends. Um, I can't hear you, Lord Navad. I think you put a magic spell on your voice. It's true. Sorry, I, I'm. I mean, we should try to figure out if we can negotiate some kind of safe passage through the road here. We have Eric snacks. Hey. Yeah. Could, yeah. Hey. <laughs> You're gonna offer up your snacks. It seems like somebody just offered up my snacks. I, you know, it's something we've got. Oh, fine. So it bellows exactly like an enormous carnivorous mushroom might. Kind of like this. But real loud. Uh, I definitely try to talk to it for sure. Okay, go ahead. Hey, Meg, that's your real name. Um, I we were ignorant to the life forms. We're figuring out a lot about what life and death is. <laughs> I don't think anyone has a grasp on that just yet. So we have accidentally injured um, or ended the life, one of your little ones, and we would like to make it up to you by make, offering you snacks. Make a persuade check. Two successes would be great here. Great. So definitely I, I see the tiny fox lady and we draw her from behind with the enormous mushroom like facing mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, so let me just get my Oh, just two partial successes, but that's it. Okay. So one weird thing that's happening everybody except Eric and Alan will start to be able to understand and speak to them. You don't know this is the reason is because there are spores these creatures uh, emit. <laughs> Eric is immune to them and Alan is an android. So everybody else can communicate because there's a biological mechanism to do it. What, what did you roll? Uh, I got a partial success. Partial. Partials. You smash stomping. I I run over to Winona and I start crying and I'm just like, I'm really sorry. Make a oh. persuade check, D. Oh no. Okay. Uh scoodly doop up boop. Um, I get a plus one influence, right? Yeah, when you're being cute because you're pure, 
big mushroom dude, don't give a shit up here. You up here, you are. Dick. They're like big mushroom yeah, dude ain't got no heart. Yeah, but mushroom. Well, he literally doesn't have a heart. <laughs> um, we take blood for blood. Ooh, um, yeah, that sounds fair. Very, you know, Old Testament. But um, we were just wondering if uh, you would take snack for blood. It leans down to the little one. When, when we bleed, we take blood for blood. It's justice. Yes, Father. Hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. Snack? Uh, Are you a snack? No, but no, no, no. Um, is there anything else besides blood, um, sugar, batteries, manual blood. labor? Blood! You make squish. We make squish and drink. Winona, look. I mean, if you actually look at how much blood I spilled of this thing, it's only like, you know, like a little bit. I could always like break my finger. I feel really bad. I just don't. Oh goodness. Um. Okay. Well, I mean. We could... Well, you you certainly have a scalpel and bandages if she offers yeah. that. We could pull our blood. Um, and I can make it quick and and relatively pain. Well, it's going to be not painless. Um, so looking at the blood because you're holding the thing, it's not a lot. Just uh, take it. Just okay, take okay, okay. It. Let me, and then I can I just do this, or do I need to roll for no, that? No, you can do it. Okay. Yeah, we only roll when the outcome's uncertain. If you can't make an incision and put on a band aid, you're fired. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to do that anymore. That felt like. Um, so you're going to go ahead and spill the blood. Um, Navad, because you're not directly involved, it looks, and God knows how you're reading this on the giant mushroom. It seems surprised that the reaction is to literally just literally do it. Like it seems to have been like vengeance, squishy squish drink. And she literally is like, I feel bad. Here's your blood. You see the thing sort of being <laughs> the giant mushroom is taken aback by her companion. Right. Okay. So the little one moves forward and comes up and stands on the dripped blood and seems to drink it. And it's big. It's like seven feet tall. And it, you know, sucks it up, makes it like a little yummy noise. <laughs> and Waddle stomps back over to dad. And then I say, I shall call that one Seymour, even though that's not the name of the plant. Get you it? You cry for shrooms? Yes. Are Alan and I just hearing them making these weird grunting noises at each you other? Absolutely are. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Alan and Eric, they're just making bizarre mushroom grumbly squirty puzzle <laughs> noises. Okay, so watching so in, in very uh, Eric fashion, as soon as there's a bunch <laughs> of grunting and then D cuts herself and offers her blood. Eric pulls his gun. Fortunately, they don't seem to entirely track what that means. Um, can we interpret to Eric what's happening? Go ahead, try. Uh, Eric, why are you why are you pulling your gun? Because y'all just started grunting like crazy, and then D is bleeding, and and I'm afraid that they've been possessed by a giant mushroom. Oh, I killed the baby. Mushroom <laughs> and they in my blood, and so I just gave it to them, and they drank it so hard. See, I have some facility with mushrooms, and that is exactly the sort of thing one might say if they are under the effects of mushrooms. No, where you you can't hear them speaking. No, I cannot. Look, They're talking to us, dude. Yeah, Nevada. dude. Are you sure you didn't eat the mushrooms? Uh, no! Alan Five, back us up. You can clearly hear what's happening. 
So uh, the little uh, one says the big one. They're nice, Daddy. Alice five. Wait, hello. Um. Why are you? Why are? Why is every? Why? I think everyone should calm down and take 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 take, take a second to think about how good it is for us to be alive right now. <laughs> Look at each other and see how far we have come. Dan, Please. did you uh, did you eat the mushrooms too? No, I, I just, we have so little time on this. Planet. Again. I have a lot of experience with mushrooms, and that is exactly the sort of thing one might say. I run up to Eric and I grab his shoulders and I'm just like, don't you understand? If you hurt one mushroom, every mushroom feels its pain. Uh, I go up to the big uh, mushroom and, and say, is debt, has our debt been paid? It leans back its massive cap and bellows. When it does, all of the mushrooms begin to move away from the road. They make a noise. They, they're making, they're parting the Red Sea. D, it worked! You did it! Good job, D. I think we should, um, I think we should get back in the truck and get driving while they've made room for us. I take the dead mushroom and I pack it away so I can study it. Oh God, okay. Or later for my <laughs> yeah. I run up to the really, really, really big one. Yep. And uh, I'm very careful to not step on anything right. on the way. So I'm running kind of like, um, like, a, like this. Right. Uh, but animal. I get over to it and I hug it and I say, I'm sorry. And then I kiss it and then I leave. It makes a, mm, it's kind of a noise. <laughs> and you have parted the mushroom sea, which is a dream Eric has had so many times. Man, I have parted the mushroom sea more times than I can possibly <laughs> can. <laughs> and you get into the truck and you continue on your journey. I did not like that place. <laughs> uh, given how well that was done, I'm going to flip you back to good karma. Wow. Ian Winona come in in clutch. Day four. <clears throat> Midday, you spot the wayward camp. <laughs> Seven people are surrounded, uh, surrounding a tent camp. There are gunners, at least, at least three of the trucks, fire pent at the center of the camp. It looks like, and this is something that D could back up for you, the camp wayward is around 46, 48 to 60 folks. It's, uh, you know, relatively typical of a nomadic camp, uh, if a little large. What do you do? Don't we have, like, a thing to look for where... Um... Uh, Bertram is in town. Well, the, the thing leads you here. That just tracks the, the settlement. You see their antenna. You've come here. You know that Bertram lives here. He right. actually, within the caravan, he lives in a caravan. So okay. you know exactly where he'd be. Okay. So then um, I just, uh, I like, you know, flirtily give N Navad directions, but I'm a landmark person. Okay. So, uh, you know, um, turn left at the grain of sand that looks a little <laughs> like, you know, that kind of thing. You want to pull up outside, uh, and I take it because you know them, D will lead the way? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. So, fairly active camp. Uh, you see, you're not in the middle yet, but you see half a dozen scavengers from the camp are sorting salvage. They have bins of various kinds. They've got stuff they picked up when they're on their last run. And they're sorting it into like, you know, broken, high trade value. You know, they're just doing their, their thing. And there's people cooking food and there's people preparing for the next trade run. There's a couple of ones that are like um, mobile homes or Bertram's caravan. 
that are that serve <laughs> those like buildings. And uh, you never met either of the leaders. You know them, so you know uh, Jesse by sight. Uh, Jesse wears white clothes that she manages to keep white, and she's got a large uh, poof of purple hair. And uh, so that means that James is out uh, on a scouting run because they're always, one's always where the other is not. Uh, and she's basically wandering around the camp giving orders, uh, running the place. And as you come in, you see the people in a bunch of the, <laughs> a lot like yours, uh, pickup trucks with grip handles and you know, firing, you know, uh, brackets. And they're armed. There's at least three that you can see, and they've got submachine guns. So it's a pretty well-armed camp. And you know, again, from experience, because of your brush with the believers, that it keeps you <laughs> run into trouble like that or with raiders. So if you've got anything of value, if you're not able to defend yourself because you're not dug in, you fall pretty quickly. So uh, do you want to D bring them in, talk to anybody, talk to the leader, or just go directly to Bertram's? How do you how do you proceed? Well, knowing D, precious pants she is, uh, I think uh, I'd be I'd be in there like waving out the out the freaking window like hi, hi. So the people in the camp that know you, literally like one of the big tough guys, the submachine guns. Oh, hi, Dee. I, I saved a scone for you. Thank you, Baron. Um, Later, uh, go parking up the, the, the four behind the blue the blue car there. Oh, Darzeel, you're the best. <laughs> um, yeah. And then I ask where uh, where uh, Jesse and James and um, Bertram are. Uh, right. Bertram's in his caravan. Jesse's in charge right now. James is out on a scout run for the next scavenge pick. Sounds great. Uh, let's let's go say hi to Jesse really quick before we say huh? hi to Bertram. So the group heads in together. Um, there's a little bit. So let me know based on how you think Alan would react. If he'd actually if this would register with him. There are some of the people here that look at him like Jawas because they're hardcore scavengers, right? So when you walk in, Alan is clearly a very expensive and valuable and rare machine. So does he does he track that at all? Alan does Alan track that? Yeah. Um I I I don't I don't think so. I think he's no. kind of yeah. So just they're paying attention to him, but does the deeper meaning of it just kind of bounces off? Yeah. Okay, so they seem friendly <laughs> from Alan's point of view, right? <laughs> hey, hey, I wore this tight top, and all those guys, they're all masturbating. They're super friendly. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. yeah, so Alan is, the others will notice that the scavengers, and Dee would not notice this because she's excited to be back among more friends, but everybody else would catch that some of them are given the Jawa once over to the android. <laughs> And that Alan, being as blessedly good-natured and kind of naive as he is, is like, you know, oh, hi. Um, do any of you react to that at all? Yeah, um, I kind of walk up and put my arm around him. Okay. And put my hand on the back of, the, of Karen, on the butt of my gun. Uh, and half of them will go, oh, he's in the party. And the other half will go, oh, the goblin owns him. So they all kind of look away. So it has the desired effect in a variety of different ways. Huh. So as you're approaching uh, Jesse, Eric, you notice uh, a goblin, a little darker skinned than you, looks a lot like you, more scars, has like facial hair, so it's almost like the Star Trek Mirror Universe version of you. Mm -hmm. And whereas you're wearing all bright standout colors, he's got a very, the production designer was instructed design a costume that looks like Eric's, but is a darker version of it. So it's 
almost the same coat, but it's dark and kind of a little bit military cut instead of like the Prince Purple Rain Edition jacket. Um, he's smoking a cigar with his legs up. He's got, you can see on one side, he's probably got a pistol on each side because that's what he prefers because he's a pistol guy, you're a rifle guy. Uh, that looks like Donnelly. So does he see me? No. Good. So I pull Karen out and I shoot him. Okay. Um, oh. Everyone initiative. Dude? Who is this dude? <laughs> Tell you in a minute. Oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Holy cow. <laughs> Eric, what's your initiative? 40. Holy shit. D. Sorry, right, come back to me. Wait, so we're just like, we're like strolling through this camp and then all of a sudden Eric... I'll, I'll give you the narrative overview when I get the initiative. Sure, sure, sure. Nevada. Oh, I got to roll. I didn't even know 30. we were fighting. It just is like it happened <laughs> so fast. Oh, real fast, yeah. 30. Thank you. Uh, 10, 12. I'm 13. Again. Yeah. Why not? 18. Alan? Um, what's your uh, initiative? Alan, you're rolling your speed to get your initiative. Left. Say I'm so. such a boof doofus. Don't mind me. Don't mind me. Don't ever think about. Don't ever. Don't ever. <laughs> I, I know boof doofuses, and my friend, you are no boof doofus. Oh no, I'm I'm up there. Whoever you. Neither know. are you a boof <laughs> nor a doofus. So, I, I do have to say we're all in the same boat of like we're rolling dice and we didn't even know we're like wait what's happening right. 29 so <laughs> 29. Cool. all right eric so yeah. i am doing something where remember I, I talked to you at one point about how there's a way to jump initiative yeah you can do that to try to evade so i'm going to try to evade if i realize you're attacking me and the way you do that and this applies to you guys too is the awareness skill because the awareness is the spidey sense I'm being attacked or sniped or backstabbed. So I got to make my awareness test. Now you're not sneaking because your reaction isn't any kind of stealth. It's fuck this, pull your gun, shoot him. Right. Um, so he's going to try. So he does notice, he doesn't know it's you because it's the, like the finally owned combat sense of a guy that's been in country too long. So he's just going to immediately go into a vein. Uh, but he needs to roll well. Because evading guns is harder than avoiding uh, bows and throwing things. Uh, the easiest, oh, he rolled three sixes. Uh, okay. So, unfortunately, and notice I'm not having the enemies evade a lot because this sucks. You shoot. What you roll, unfortunately, does not matter. Because you're going to end up hitting and he's going to evade past it. So, narratively, uh, everyone sees Eric pull his gun, you look over, and even if you didn't notice him before, special attention will be drawn to the person he shot at, which is a goblin who looks kind of like Eric, maybe a little older, uh, bearded, uh, worse for wear, like has scars, uh, looks, reeks of rough customer. He's he like a bizarro shoot. Eric. Uh, he, yeah, he shoots, the guy kicks his chair over, so he doesn't do like a cool flippy D thing. He just takes the folding chair and does this with it. So you end up shooting the fire. Like you don't hurt anybody, but it ends up being a wasted shot. This is how we're going to cost him. When you evade, it costs you your action for the round. So he can't do anything else. Um, uh, the next one up is D. Yeah. D, what do you do? And various people in the camp are going to have various reactions, but nobody, almost by definition, no one reacts quite as fast as Eric does. Number one, aggressive stance. Number two, yeah. acrobatics to like run, like get over there all fancily. Okay. Well, over there, what do you mean? What do you want? Uh, to like, I want to, I want to, I want to cover the ground between me and that person as fast as possible, a la parkour. And then, well, do you want to engage with them or do you want to be between them or do you want to 
oh no i want to like clearly eric is not about it so i'm just like straight battle mode like uh, kicking ass okay so go ahead and you're allowed to uh do what's called a maneuver to okay. close distance at, you're still at near so you don't have to use your full action unless you're changing range category which you're not so okay. you can do the parkour uh i'm not even gonna make you roll because there is she literally has a feat called hardcore parkour so she can do cool flip over shit without being <laughs> slowed down. And so she crosses the, the distance fluidly and then attacks the guy who's literally on the ground with his little goblin legs stuck up. Uh, go ahead and roll the hit. Okay. Um, am I doing like brawl melee? Brawl melee. Hit. Okay. Then, Damage. Uh, uh, six, four, and one. Okay. And then I roll again, right? Yes, so that's uh, one, two, that's five. And then a one. Okay, so you do five hits. Uh, and Alan, how do you react to this? I'm kind of just watching everyone go into battle mode again. <laughs> and I'm trying to just, okay, well, um, uh, well, have, have we... Have we considered talking yet? I, <laughs> we have moved to action, but there has been no discussion. And I start to uh, shamble up to Eric to try and see what's going on, get to the bottom of this. Donnelly, still lying on the ground, does not get up. He pulls his hands away from his weapons and puts them to his up. He's laying on the ground, so he does this. Uh, and shortly after that, the leader, Jesse, shoots her pistol in the air and says, everybody calm the fuck down. Yes, ma'am. Does anyone keep fighting? Mm -mm. Oh, I lost my, I lost my ear, my headphones. Oh, no. I am pro calm. I'm, I'm waiting for Alan Five to like get some sort of iron giant trigger and like all the nuts <laughs> start arming up and uh sorry i lost my headphones she said oh, calm no. the fuck down you said does anybody keep fighting yes um i'm not going to shoot but i am going to get as close to him as i can and hit him in the face with the butt of my rifle you will do so you're definitely aware of this you will get shot I don't yeah, care. you guys with the guns. Yeah, that makes sense. So um, I think I think if we see Eric like moving in to do that, yeah, I'm gonna make a move to like kind of you. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm whoa. standing this... right there. I'll catch that. I'll catch the butt and, and look at him and just Eric be like, kind of lose it before. Yeah. Uh, he has his own switch, and it's definitely been flipped. Uh, so Eric, your party is going to try to stop you. Will you fight them? Just to continue to do this, or will you um, let them stop you? I'm going to yell as loud as I possibly can, which I cannot do now because I have a four year old. That's fine. We'll, we'll pretend it's super, super loud. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give a monkey scream and I'm going to fall to my knees and begin crying as hard as I possibly can. Oh, okay. Uh, I just say to him, "You're an ex you're not your gun. Your gun is an extension of you." Oh, if we give experience points, you get experience points for that. <laughs> um, and then I drop my gun on the ground. Jesse says, what the fuck was that? And Donnelly says, it's my brother. Oh, I hear it. He, he gets up and dusts off his coat and puts the folding chair back up. He's got reason to be pissed. I like lean over to D and say, is this how goblins greet each other? <laughs> Everybody has a sibling that looks really similar to them here. And, and to be fair, and I, I totally get this where D's coming from. 
Like, this is just clearly... like everybody's a sibling and they're cloned. Yeah. So D's mind? Yeah, clearly. But just so that we all know as reading the story, like he's clearly an older, just an older brother. And uh, has shorter arms. And that was like no end of teasing when you were younger. Hey, monkey arms. And that kind of shit. <laughs> hey, three eyes. <laughs> yeah. Um, so Jesse says, Look, we know D, we don't know you. We knew B. We, we trust them both. She turns to Donnelly. You know, we've, we've got rules against firing in the damn camp. Donnelly says, like I said, he's got reasons. Can you and your friends take it out of the damn camp? Yeah, Jesse, no problems. Uh, we were just here to check in. Um, I wanted to say hi before we went in and, um, <coughs> excuse me, talk to Bertram. So I, you know, I was just being, I was just trying to be respectful. What? Why don't you sort this out? And then if everything goes as it should, come on back. But for now, get the fuck out of my camp. Okay, I'm sorry. See, see, if something like this happens, it draws James' attention away from what he's doing. And if he was in combat, we could get him killed with shit like this. Okay, sorry. It's all right, you didn't do anything. I mean, you did start Kaitel kicking him when he was down. Which was maybe not a totally cool move. Mm, sorry. Yeah, you know. Nah, no. Okay. Uh, you, you, uh, you, you, and uh, points to two of the guards with the submachine guns. Uh, escort uh, uh, Donnelly out. Apparently, they they got to talk, or one of them has to kill the other. Do it like at least 50 yards outside the camp line, please. And if one of them does die, uh, bury them at least a quarter mile away so we don't draw anything. So, oh, all right, boss. Can I, can I still give D the, the muffin top I got for? Yes, you can give her the muffin top. It's fine. Uh, so the two groups leave camp and uh, so it's Donnelly and the two guys that shoot some machine guns. And they seem to be there as much for him as for Eric. Uh, because they, I don't know exactly, and I'll ask Mike in a minute to describe Eric's demeanor. But Donnelly is tense, right? So like his hands are doing that almost Western, like, you know, you can tell he's ready to draw. Uh, and you know, those of you who have traveled with Goldwater, he has practiced, he's actually got a feet, a quick draw feet, and you've seen him practice, and he looks the way Donnelly is standing. So you have a funny feeling the fact that Eric got the drop on him was exceptional, because Donnelly looks to, for his special to be gunplay. Um, so you're now outside camp. Eric, what do you look like, like visually? Like, what's your demeanor? Um I look a way that probably none of them have ever seen me look before, which is completely bereft of confidence. Um, and for the moment, short, um, real short and small, um, probably more monkey than I have ever looked in their presence. Um, Occasionally as, like, like a knuckle. Yeah. Walk. Yeah. 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 Um, embarrassed and sad, sad beyond measure um and uh not the usual doesn't care if anything happens to him which he's sort of confident that things are not going to happen to him but um actually not caring if anything happens to him um and he uh, left Karen on the ground when he got up to leave. You, and, you've definitely never seen that before. Yeah. Um, 
and is uh, walking uh, without purpose or direction ahead of everybody else with no desire to make any contact with anybody at all. So you're now about 50 yards outside the camp line and Donnelly and his two minders. So are you looking for me? Never. So just coincidence, huh? Mm-hmm. You're a better shot than last time. Not good enough. Yeah, never good enough. Shut your mouth. I was just a hired gun here. I don't care. One of us has got to go. Who's it going to be? You. D, I need you to make a persuade roll with your per advantage to see if the guards favor you or the hired gun. Okay. Because they're not actually reading it as Eric because they're kind of here under your flag. No. You have good karma. You want to use it? Yeah. Okay, you succeed. The two guards literally turn their guns on Donnelly. Time to go, guy. He puts his arms up again. And he turns, smart enough to not say anything else, and walks over to where uh, the vehicles are at the edge of camp. And he's got a motorcycle. This is <clears throat> the time I certainly wish that I had not left my gun on the floor of the campground. Um, Did you say it out loud? No, that's just me. That's okay. me. Gotcha. Uh, <laughs> um, and you tell the guards are kind of tracking both of you. And one of them actually says to you, and it's his voice seems at least a little compassionate. It's better if we just let him go, boss. Um, Eric doesn't know what to do. Like literally just does not know what to do. So this is another thing that the, the especially less true of D, but the Vod and Winona who've been with him for years now, the fact like the way initiative, even bringing this down to games, the way the initiative system is set up is that speed thing is based on like your combat ability. He's like the guy that acts like always like that. So the fact that he's kind of just standing there is again, something you've never seen from him. Yeah, we could definitely run up to him. Yeah. And uh, just sort of, hey, Eric, um, Not now. <clears throat> Not now. You want to walk it off and we continue on or need some alone time? Yeah. We're going to pull the camera back, show the group heading back to the camp, uh, show Eric kind of half-assedly shuffling back. Um, We'll, we'll pivot the shot to look down and we'll see him picking the gun back up. So I assume when you're close to Karen, you'll, you do notice that nobody came anywhere near that damn gun. Mm -hmm. like, you're smart enough to be like, you know what? It's probably worth money, but it's not worth my life. So let's just let it sit right there. Uh, so no one's talked with it. Um, we're going to have the everyone except Eric go up to the caravan. Uh, and then Eric will be by himself for the time being. Uh, we'll get back to him in a minute. Uh, the four of you knock on the door of the caravan. Uh, door opens and you see a dude. Um, remember the um, the cartoon with the little owl that wanted to sing about the sun yeah. and the moon? I want to sing about the sun and the moon. Moon and the June and the spring. I want to sing. 
look, if that guy grew up and became like a professor, that's what Bertram looks like. So, oh, D, D, so good to see you. And he's an owl, so his glasses were made out of other kinds of lenses. They're like that big. Oh, Bernie, it's good to see you. You, you didn't send ahead. I don't have anything ready. I, I know we were we were working. You were happy with the uh, the ice screens, yes? Everything is perfect. No, 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 no. This is something different. This is something new. I need you to meet a friend of mine and help them out. They're in a bit of a pickle. Uh, this is this is out of time. I made that. Wah! Oh, I'm sorry about the wah. I hope that wasn't rude. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, this is D uh, Dr. Winona and uh, Lord Navad and, and my friend Alan. Hello. Hello. Remarkable. I, I, I was making tea. Do you care for tea? Why, yes. I'd love some tea. Really? Yes. Remarkable. He closes the door. Was everything, is, is anyone dead? Not yet. Not th this round. That sounded like real nasty business out there. Yeah. All right. So I, I shouldn't worry. Mm. Not yet. Worry Not a little. Yet. All right. I got gotcha. you. Um, so how can I help you, uh, Adam? What, what can I do? Well, um, and he opens his chest. <laughs> and while you're doing that, you see that his, the caravan is clearly his short job. So it looks, it reminds you a little bit of the professor that kind of raised you. His demeanor is very similar, except that he's an owl. <laughs> and he's got like, you know, the workbench with the soldering iron and the, the thing with the beep sounds. and. He's got all the, the, the gadgets and tools that you kind of expected. So you're clearly in the right place. He, his, he goes pie-eyed, um, makes, he's, he's actually got a beak, but he makes a little bit of a whistling noise. That's, that's magnificent. Oh, oh, does that hurt? Um, no. Interesting. Interesting. So you, how? Oh. D. So D. Why did? Why is Alan here? Um. I think Alan's dying. Oh and no. I think you're the only person that can save him. He blinks. Big all blinks. Uh, he also has the thing where he's got an owl neck. So sometimes when you're talking, he'll turn his head ways that human heads don't go. Oh, it's a bit disconcerting because he's his mannerisms are very humanoid, but his owl neck is not. Um, so, and please forgive me if this, well, it's, I was going to say hurts your feelings, but that's, that's part of the question, isn't it? I, so I have to ask this. Am I, are you asking me to repair a, a, a friend or, or a device? Mm. Do I have to pick one? They're very different things, D. Jeepers, Jeepers is not a, a person. Jeepers only has rudimentary uh, question and repeat algorithms. He doesn't even have full AI. Jeepers is a device. Mm. Jeepers is not a person. Alan's a friend. He's a friend. So I'm a friend. He He's pulls a out friend. a stool and pulls out another one for you. And it's one of those kind of like uh, garage type stools. Mm. Sit, sit, friend. Okay. Do, do you mind if I examine you? to try to determine what we're dealing with? Not at all. So D, you've helped me before. Uh, I'm going to ask you for some tools. Mm -hmm. uh, I have various devices to analyze the problem. 
but also I must ask you some questions. Is, is that all right, Alan? Yes. Do you yes, have a designation other than your name? Not that I know of. All right. All right, uh, hand me those leads there. So, so Alan, um, you, you're, you're on a beach and, and you see a turtle and the turtle's on its back and it's very hot and the sun is beating down and you don't turn it over and end its pain. Why, why do you think you leave the turtle in the sun suffering like that? Well, you simply don't leave the turtle in the sun. You, 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 you flip him over. So Why would? But you're not. Why would you not? Well, I must have malfunctioned in a way where I can no longer move my arms. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, pass me the calipers there. Could you uh, open your chest cavity back up for me? Of course. So there's a butter dish over there with a, a silver paste. I need just a little bit on that trowel there. It, it's, it's, it's like a sound that'll help them with the heat. All right, so you are the conductor of a train. And there's, you're going down the track very fast. And up ahead, you see that the train can go one way or the other. You can shift so that you go from one set of tracks to the other. And on one side, the way you're going, uh, there's Winona, and she's waving, and you realize that you're going to hit her with the train. If you pull the lever, you're going to switch the rails, and you're going to go to the side, and there are six little baby humans. And they're innocent, and they're playing with a toy, and they don't see you coming. So do you allow the train to go down the track and flatten your fox friend, or do you pull the lever and splatter the babies? Well, seeing as I'm an android, my seeing distance is much farther than that of a human, which would give me enough time to jump out the front of the train and stop it with my strength. As you see, I'm an android. I can stop a train. So you would discover that the windows are of plasteel, and despite the speed of your reflexes, you are trapped within the engineer booth and must make the decision to pull the lever or not. Can I, can I have those uh, alligator clips with the green wire? Thank you. Hmm. Well, that's a difficult decision to make. And you have only seconds to make it. I guess I protect my friend. Excellent. How do you feel about that as the babies go splattering across the tracks? Well, I don't like it because all of a sudden, mystically, plasteel windows have appeared on the train, stopping me from stopping the train. They were always there. It's just your malfunctioning perception meant that you didn't notice them. Ah, well, I'd probably find who made the train. Can, I break you, my code. Can you pass me that sandpaper, please? All right. Do you know who Richard Nixon was? I there 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 was rumblings. I've seen slips of things here's and there's. All right. Do you know who Adolf Hitler was? Yes. Do you know who Donald Trump was? No. All right. Um. Let's use Goring. Do you know who Herman Goring was? Um, How about Adam Sandler? These these names, I yeah, they're not really. Hmm. We can't play Mary Fuck Kill then. All right, hand me those probes. That big long one. The one that looks a little scary? All right, thank you, Dee. So I'm going to insert this into an orifice where it shouldn't go. 
I want you to tell me how it feels. Okay. So he does the equivalent of putting a branding iron into your sphincter. And your system goes, you get an intense pain reaction. On top of it, feeling a violation because he's clearly done something to hurt you. What do you do? Going to ask you to stop. I'll be forced to defend myself. Well, just to ask me to stop. I mean, I've got a probe up your ass. And he pushes it a little farther. Then Look stop. Ah, oh, there you go. He pulls it up. He has me the towel, please. He uh, wipes his hands, puts his hand on your shoulder. I'm sorry, my friend. As far as I'm concerned, you're as much a person as any of us. It would be my privilege to help you any way I can. Now you've passed the Turing test. Okay. Well, that's good well, to that's, know. That's important. That means you're indistinguishable from any other sentient creature. All right. It means, at least as far as I'm concerned, he is a friend, he's alive, he's not a piece of gear. I think I know where we can get help. And that's where we're going to stop this episode. And next episode, mm. we will go to him for help. And we'll probably start with Eric. Because Eric has shit to work yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go All get right. that thumb. Thanks, guys. Uh, thanks, Ify. It was great to have you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, let's go ahead. Um, we're gonna. So next week, we're going to be back with the second half of this. Um, and I think we're going to go over to Shannon for credits and yes. see you all. Lulu. That's right. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much. Uh, that is our November 2nd episode. Uh, so special shout out to uh, Colt Joyce, our technical director. Uh, Qui-Gon, keeping it real in the moderation chat, uh, helping us out there. Andreas Favis. Uh, doing uh, our uh, awesome, mysterious German narration uh, and uh, keeping it real there. Um, big shout out to Ify, who's going to be back next Monday for joining our stream. Thank you very much, my friend. And until then, we'll see you in the wasteland.